will kick off. Back deep for the Packers are Travis Jervy and Antonio Freeman, a pair of rookies. This short kick will come down to Jervy. A lot of speed for the rookie from Citadel, and a flag goes down as Jervy is stopped shy of the 25-yard line. Penalty. The referee today is Dick Hantak. And our first conference holding penalty against the Packers will set them back. Brett Favre, who threw four touchdown passes, one in each quarter, two weeks ago at Lambeau Field, will have an offensive line that has performed very well. Rutgers, Taylor, Winters, Galbraith, and Earl Dotson. Edgar Bennett, who had his best day as a pro. Dorsey Levins in the backfield. Anthony Morgan and Robert Brooks, the wide receivers. Mike Shimura the tight end, but we'll see a lot of Keith Jackson. First down from the 14-yard line. And it's Edgar Bennett diving forward and picks up about three or four yards. Defensively for the Minnesota Vikings. Rookie Derek Alexander with John Randall. He is the strength of that line. Esra Tua Olo and Roy Barker make up the front four. Ed McDaniel, Jeff Brady playing in place of Jack Del Rio, and Broderick Thomas, who hasn't really delivered the pass rush. Dwayne Washington, Charles Mincy, who is a late starter at free safety, Harlan Barnett in the defensive secondary, along with Dwayne Washington. Second down and seven. Far up to the air, and over the middle, he was going for Shimura. Incomplete, and that'll bring up third down. Jeff Brady, the middle linebacker, was defending. You know, he start, started to talk at this top about Mike Holmgren and how angry he was. And, you know, I really got the sense that he took it more than personally. I mean, it almost, in fact, like he was almost pressing. And I talked to him yesterday and said, you know, Mike, you got to let this stuff go. Because what happens is if you beat a young team down, the Packers are relatively young. If you beat them down, those young guys start to believe you're doing more bad than good. So you got to keep it positive. Absolutely. Third down and seven. Four wide receivers for Green Bay. Barr stepping up, and he has the open man, Morgan. Anthony Morgan will have a first down for the Packers. Robert Griffith, the nickelback, defending for the Vikings. See that guy right there, Brett Favre? Brett Favre is having his best year. Last week against Detroit, it looked to me like he reverted a little bit and started to press. I asked him about it, and he said, yeah, you know, I tried to make a big play because I felt like we had to get something going. And I think if Favre just settles himself down, plays his game what he had been doing, they're going to be fine because he's, he's arrived. That has been unlike what he's been doing lately. He had been kind of calm. First down on the 27th. Flag now. And the pass to Shimura, the tight end. And he brings it out to the 45-yard line. A penalty flag down, however. They're going to get John Randall for jumping. And then Favre. Hey, he didn't forget from two weeks ago. Remember, Chamora had his big game two, two weeks ago against Minnesota? He went right back to Chamora. Five catches Outside. at 101 yards. Defense number 93. Penalty is declined. Right on that. First that down. was Randall, and on the free play, an 18-yard pickup. Yeah, you know what happens when you start talking about the wide receivers replacing Sterling Sharp, Edgar Bennett, and all this stuff? The tight end can get forgotten. And Shamora is one of those guys who's developing. And so you still don't emphasize him in the offense. And I think Barb can take advantage of that. From the 45-yard line, Bennett trying the right side. And he is tackled from behind by Ed McDaniel, who's going to have to bear a lot of responsibility today with Jeff Brady. Much traveled the middle linebacker in for Jack Del Rio. No gain on the play. And there is Del Rio, who has seen his 105 consecutive game streak snap that was the longest starting streak on the viking team yeah and you take the professor out of the defense see that's been the guy who's been the coach on the field for him and that's something that the rest of the defense will have to shoulder particularly Brady. second and ten with four wide receivers Barb hits his man and a catch by robert brooks that was a brilliantly executed play, and the Packers have a first down to the Vikings' 35-yard line. Fuller on the stop. Well, if Holmgren wanted to get an early start to erase last week, he's doing a great job of it. 
You know what they're doing? They're using the same personnel. You see the tight end, Shamora? See, they split him out wide. And what that does is it forces your defense to spread the field. And now you take your receiver, who's inside the tight end, you run him down inside, working off of safety, you get a big play. First down on the 34, the Vikings. That was a 21-yard pickup. Barb again, and he has a man, and it's Brooks. And Robert Brooks is out of bounds inside the 15-yard line. Two passes to Robert Brooks. This one for 21, so that's 42 yards on the last two plays. You can forget about Sharp, uh, about Favre being not sharp. Because he is hotter and can be. This ball is exactly where it has to be. They caught him in his zone. You're going to watch Foley. He's going to get the jam, then he settles. Now you turn him over to the next level. The ball has to be between levels. It was thrown perfectly. You see the safety coming over late. Last week, six catches and 127 yards and a touchdown for Brooks. Ball on the 13, and they put it on the ground to Edgar Bennett, and Bennett's going to score. Touchdown, Packers. Beautifully blocked up front by the left side. The Green Bay Packers said we have to start fast. You can't start any faster than they did. They made it look easy. 13-yard run off the left side. Watch Aaron Taylor inside. Ken Rutgers with a nice job turning out. And then Dorsey Levins with the block right there. You see this right here. Takes care of Broderick Thomas. And then Brady can't get over there. Then it's into the second level, and that's six. The extra point. Chris Jackie's kick is good. And the Packers have jumped in front of the Vikings on the first possession of the game. 7-0. And Edgar Bennett with his second touchdown rushing of the year. And that should sign home. The Packers have scored quickly, leading the Vikings 7-0. 86-yard drive. Remember, there was a penalty on the kickoff. Far was 4 for 5 for 70 yards as Bennett ran it in. Padre Ismail returning the kickoff from Hendrick. And he is upended at the 16-yard line by Terry Mickens. Well, that touchdown had a lot of good stuff going on. They fold in here. Frank Winters comes around with a nice block on Brady. Then watch Morgan down here after Rutgers turns out. Dorsey Levins comes through. He's going to take care of the at-the-point tack on Broderick Thomas. Thomas. Now watch down here. See this? This is a mistake by the rookie Fuller. See, he gets caught up with Morgan and can't get off the block. Actually, that was Washington. Can't get off the block, and that allows Bennett to get in. There's Reggie White, who wreaked havoc on the Vikings' Corey Springer when they last met. Minnesota starting from the 17. Charles Evans in motion. Boone's pass knocked down by Fred Strickland, intended for Adrian Cooper, the tight end. So Warren Moon, who has put up the numbers but not the points for the Minnesota Vikings offense, and changes in the line. Stussy, the second-year man. McDaniel, the veteran. Christie at center. Dixon playing for Chris Hinton. Graham, the running back, in for Smith. Carter, Reed, Ismail, and Adrian Cooper, the tight end. Here's Robert Smith, unable to go with a bad ankle. He hurt it against the Packers. Second and ten. Moon lost one to Chris Carter. And he is hit out of bounds by Lenny McGill defensively for the Packers and the man to watch today will be Reggie White Darius Holland a rookie has played well at defensive tackle George Koontz Fred Strickland and Wayne Simmons make up the linebacking core Doug Evans George Teague Leroy Butler and Craig Newsom Newsom and Evans had sparkling games both against Minnesota two weeks ago third down and four Vikings on their 23 by Amp Lee, and he's not going to get the first down, or will he? He is. Forward progress will be enough for the first down. You can see where the official marks it, and he made it by less than a yard. You know, you talk about Robert Smith and everybody hurt. Chris Hinton is the key to this offense. When they lost Chris Hinton, they became a one-dimensional team. They could not run to the right side at all because of the rookie Stringer and David Dixon being young. And then pass protection... You couldn't help the Rooks, so you really had to balance your front, maybe use a tight end. And then what happened is you can't run at all. So you have to run to the left and throw. And then it has to come out quick. 
I mean, whenever you're playing a guy like Reggie White, you have to account for him. And so what do you do? You bump him with the tight end. Heck, you take your wide receiver, and then all else fails, you have that big rookie tackle in there. I mean, he ruined their offense so much. This guy right here, Chris Hinton, by not being in there, it changed the dyna dynamics of the whole offense. Well, Matt, the Vikings have not won since Hinton has been out. They've lost three games. First and 10 on the 27th. After the first down, catch by Ampley. Boone under pressure. Gets away, trying to go downfield, and the pass nearly intercepted by Doug Evans. It was intended for Conrad Ismail. Dick, remember I told you they're going to have to try to get a big play early? They know it, too. See, this is not the kind of offense that can methodically work the ball down the field. Watch this right here, Reggie White. Just throws him to the side. See, Warren Moon knows that, too. So he's got to try to make a big play. And at some point in this game, he's going to have to scramble, use his athletic ability to buy some time, and then take his shot down the field. So far, all four plays have been passes similar to the way they played it in Lambeau Field two weeks ago. Second down and 10. Move to Carter. And Newsom covers him up at a short, short gain of eight yards. Hey, you know what happens? You get a young rookie like Corey Stringer, and you're an old vet, the best in the league. You want to set the tone. This is two weeks ago, the first play. Watch Corey Stringer. First play of the game, you got all this build up about what's going to happen with Reggie White on your, you know, you're going to do your job, you're going to be tough and all this stuff. This is what happens. He gets right under you and he just runs you right over. And that just sets the tone, gets in your head. You think, I can't let that happen. I don't want to be embarrassed. And then he's got you. Third down and two. The Vikings have not run the ball yet. And they won't now. And the pass is deflected, incomplete, intended for Chris Carter. And it was Doug Evans. Doug Evans getting off to another fine start against these Minnesota Vikings, and that will bring up fourth down, and Minnesota will have to kick. Well, you know who stopped the Minnesota Vikings? The Minnesota Vikings. Chris Carter should make that catch. Man, that's an all-pro receiver. The ball's right there. You have the first down. You drop it. Mike Saxon will be kicking it, and Antonio Freeman goes back deep. Vikings have won the last three games against the Packers here at the Metrodome. They're on the short end here. Saxon with a high, good kick. Freeman at the 20-yard line. Driven back. Barb was four for five for 70 yards on that initial drive. Barb's on a screen pass to Edgar Bennett. Flag is down, and Bennett is stopped after a nine-yard pickup. Corey Fuller and Ed McDaniel, but a flag on the play. See, John Randall got up after that, turning back to Favre, and yelling at him, saying, you got me on that one. There's a couple things you have to do when you attack this Minnesota defense. The first thing is block John Randall. And then you have to keep him off balance. So you try to run traps at him to slow him down, and then you run your screens to slow him down. Number 90, defense lined up in the neutral zone prior to the snap. Pinley is declined, second down. That was the rookie, Derek Alexander, from Florida State, one of two first-round picks by the Minnesota Vikings. They obviously declined it, and will it'll be second down and one. Keith Jackson, who made his debut in a Packer uniform and dropped a short touchdown pass last week, is in there now. Here comes the blitz, and here's Edgar Bennett, who okay. dives forward and may have enough for the first down. John Randall, you were just talking about. How much does Randall miss Henry Thomas? Oh, you kidding me? <laughs> yesterday, yesterday I said, hey, Johnny, how you doing? You know, he's trying to steal my coat all day long. And he comes up to me and says, hey, yeah, how you doing, man? Good to see you. He says, hey, take me to Detroit. <laughs> he said, I want to see Henry Thomas. Uh, those guys were inseparable. They were, those, they, were, they were twins, and now they've separated them. He's still playing very, very well, but he's not making as many plays because he's the focal point. There's a great view of how short 
the Packers are over the first down, maybe just an inch. Well, it's a good thing Thomas doesn't want to come to Minnesota because they could just cross each other's paths and still not be with each yeah, other. You're right. Now, he doesn't want, you know, don't, let, don't, let me, don't get me wrong here. He didn't say trade me or any of that stuff. He just misses Henry Thomas. And he, and he really loves John Tierlink, the coach who left him, too. And he kind of feels like he's on an island, but that's going to come around. He'll, he'll, he'll hook up with somebody else, and they'll start their own relationship like he had with Tom. They spread him out with four wide receivers on third and inches. Quarterback sneak, and that'll be a first down. Brett Favre on the carry. And Brett Favre is taking a, a, a page out of the book of Randall Cunningham. Watch how he runs this. Watch over. He's going to take a step, wait, and then come back inside. The key is to let these guys get on everybody. See, you take the delay step, wait for it to open, and then you make your decision. It used to be you just go up there, you know, you get your hands under the quarterback, quick snap, and boom, just go right follow the center. Randall Cunningham started to delay, let it develop, and now everybody's doing it. Packers off to a lot better start than they were a week ago when a couple of interceptions are at Favre in the first quarter. First down on the 34. Draw play to Bennett. Oh, oh, oh. What a play by Ed McDaniel. You know, of all the players on the Minnesota Vikings, this guy is playing the best. He's having an all-pro year. Nobody's going to give him it because he's just coming off. But watch how fast he reads this thing. Watch how definitive he is. This is what he does well. This guy is a running back on defense. See, he sees it, opens up real quick, no doubt in his mind, he goes and hits it. I really like the way this guy's playing. And as we said, no longer can you say Ed McDaniel's an underrated player. Oh, no, I, he's their most productive player in their defense. Second down and 12 from the 32. Barb looking left, looking right, being chased and being dropped. Esser Atuaolo, who played with the Green Bay Packers, and was a number one draft pick and a loss of seven. So on the last two plays, the Packers have lost nine yards on offense. Well, Favre looks like he's going to look over here. They're trying to develop things here. Watch how he comes out. He's looking to the right. He sees he has man coverage. He can't get it because Washington sits on him. Now he tries to buy some time, but the coverage is here. See? And Tuolo just has enough to get it. He can sing a mean anthem. That guy's got a tremendous voice. His second sack of the year, third and 19. Barr pumps and goes deep. And downfield, and the ball is knocked away. It was intended for Terry Mickens and an outstanding defensive play made downfield by Donald Frank and Orlando Thomas. We had a lot of time to throw this football. Great protection. Nice job by Kenny Rutgers working up top. You know what? I got to tell you something. Favre made the wrong choice. Look right here. See that? Ingram is all alone. He tries to get it all at once. And actually, Mickens has him beat. The ball hung up just a little bit, and the defender was able to, to close on the ball. Fourth down. Hendrick. High kick. Not a long kick. And a fair catch called by David Palmer. So Palmer, who had missed the last two games with a hamstring pull. And there's a reverse to Amp Lee. And Ampley breaks one, and the Packers didn't figure that one out for a while. First running play of the game for the Minnesota Vikings. Leroy Butler finally made the play after a huge gain of 31 yards. Well, they got Sean Jones. Sean Jones bit hard on this. He's going to come down, and he never sees it. He's got to hold outside. See how he's closing? They tried to set him up with the trap with Adrian Cooper, and he bit hard. He didn't even realize it then. By that time, Lee had gotten outside. That's a very good job of scouting and coaching because Sean Jones does an excellent job of closing down the trap. They took advantage of it. Second longest rush of the year for the Vikings. The give is to Scotty Graham, forced to start with Robert Smith out with an ankle injury, and he picks up three. Right now, for a McDonald's game break, let's return to James Brown in our Hollywood studio. Hey, Dick, Atlanta trying to start a new home winning streak. Take a look at Scott Mitchell eyeballing David Sloan all the way. The safety, Alton Montgomery, right there for the pickoff. 71 yards later, losing a little steam, but he makes it to the end zone. Falcons on top, 10-0 over the Lions. Back to Dick and Matt. Yeah, Mitchell still does that. See, he just does enough to tease you, and then he breaks your heart. He did enough last week, and he's breaking the Lions' heart so far. Second down, seven. Chris Walsh in wide receiver. Boone with a pump fake going up top, and the pass is 
Intended for Jake Reed, covered downfield by George Teague. So you can see, uh, Matt, the point you brought out that Warren Moon, despite the absence of Hinton, not getting a lot of protection, still trying to go deep. And he didn't get any protection right there because what they did was Reggie White just clubbed his people. And Moon knows he's going to take a shot. So he knows in this game, if he's going to try to make a big play, he's going to take a beating. And, and White just got him right there. Reggie White, who has seven and a half sacks, third in the NFC. Third down and seven. Two men hit Moon, and the pass is caught. Flag is down, oh, oh, oh. and Chris Carter wound up with the ball with Doug Evans right on top of him. Remember Monday night, they did not force the ball down the field. Remember every time they got a blitz, they were throwing it out to the flat. They said, we have to change that. Here's your change. And who do you change it to? Just like we said at the beginning of the game. You let Chris Carter make a big play for you. Evans is going to run. He knows he's got help. Just run Defense, the number 33. That's, a, that's unbelievable. And then at the other end, like I said, War Moon knows if he's going to try for a big play, he's going to have to take a hit. And this time, they bring Simmons off the corner, and he gets his shot. Watch the concentration. This ball's in the air. Never takes his head off. Look at that. Carter's going to have to have a big day for the Minnesota Vikings and for Warren Moon. That is his first completion over 20 yards in the last three weeks. Last week, his longest pass play was 19. So it's first and goal at the five. James Stewart in and running back with Charles Evans, the up back. Here is Stewart, the rookie from Miami, and he gets inside the five. Leroy Butler comes up to make the play. Now this is where down inside where you have to have all the grunt work. And now you're putting it on Stewart, whereas before with Hinton in there, you can rely on Hinton and McDaniel, both your guards. Now what they've done as a running game is, is they've started to run more to the left behind Randall McDaniel and then cut back. Because what they found out is that Stringer is a better guy of just pushing and creating a cutback run. Boone's toss, touchdown. Andrew Jordan. Well, that time, Warren Moon put up the points. And the big play, the 28-yard pass to Chris Carter to set up the score, and it's now 7-6 Green Bay. Well, they send Andrew Jordan in motion going across. You see everybody staying. That usually means what they're going to do is zone you. And everything down here is zone. You see how Coots needs to get a better jam on that tight end. You can't let anybody cross your face. Quad Reves for the extra point. He has been impeccable kicking for the Minnesota Vikings. The kick is good, so Andrew Jordan makes the reception his second touchdown catch of the year. He was a sixth round pick out of Western Carolina to kick off Travis Jervy and Antonio Freeman deep for the Packers. Heading over toward Freeman at the 10. Freeman, the rookie wide receiver, carries it out to the 33 yard line to Aneo Alapate making the tackle after a return of 23. You know, in that touchdown, what happens is you're going to see he's going to go across in motion, and then he's going to come down. Now, if this is man coverage, the mistake that Koontz makes is he looks back in at the quarterbacks. If you're in man, you have to go all the way. Now, if it's in zone, what he's got to do is he's got to get the real good jam and take the tight end and jam him all the way down inside and then get off. Keith Jackson is in the lineup, first down from the 33-yard line. Barb stepping up, trying to get away, loses the ball. It is a free ball, and the Vikings pick it up. Charles Mincy recovers for Minnesota in Packer territory. Boy, Jeff Brady did a great job on that blitz. They come inside, Brady never quit. He got picked up, and he just kept on coming. McDaniel... And Brady come on a strong side blitz. You see, he gets knocked over right there. Now watch him get up. Keep on coming. Know where the ball is, see? And you whack it out of there, and the thing comes out. Watch how he knows where the ball is, see? 
gets his hands on that right arm. It flopped out of there. And then Mincy comes down with it. A nice job. And Brady, who has been with six teams in five years, including the Packers, and felt that they did not tell him the truth. They thought they were going to keep him, and they didn't. And he has a little payback, he said, coming in. First down from the 27-yard line on the draw play. And Lee, nowhere to go, and has stopped in his tracks for no gain. So Jeff Brady, who felt that Ron Wolf, the general manager of the Packers, was not honest with him, and they said, you're going to be with us. We're going to let you go, but bring you back. And then all of a sudden, the Rams picked him up and uh, said, this is a payback game for me today, and he's already paid some dividends. Like a story of a man named Brady. Forget it. You know, I didn't think you'd sing it today. <laughs> I heard it yesterday. Oh, I couldn't <laughs> help it. Just came out. Second down, 10. From the 27. Boone rolling out. Completes it to Carter. And Carter is out of bounds. Short of the first down by about five yards. Doug Evans again covering. Well, they haven't hesitated at all about getting Chris Carter involved early in this football game. You know, he said at the start, you know, what do they have to do? You know, you don't have Robert Smith and Chris Hinton speed up. So win with the guys that you have. And you have a guy like Chris Carter, heck, make him make those difficult plays because he's capable. Already with four catches. He had only one catch into the late stages of the game two weeks ago. It's third down and five. Moves pass caught. And it should be a first down to Amp Lee. Very close. And uh, looks like he's going to be short. Yeah, by a half a yard. Good tackle that time by both Wayne Simmons and Leroy Butler, the strong safety. But they're short. It is fourth down. There's some nice chess games going on here. Brian Billick, the offensive coordinator of the Vikings, and Fritz Shermer, the defensive coordinator with the Packers. And then on the other side, you have a pretty good one going Absolutely. with Tony Dungy on the defensive side for Minnesota. Fourth and that much. They're going to measure. And the Vikings want to see uh, just how far they have to go in case they decide to go for it on fourth down. I think you take the points here. I think this is one of those situations. The way the Packers have moved the football. You're right. Now you go ahead and take the points. The crowd may not like the decision, but it's the smart and percentage move for Dennis Green. He makes the right decision. And those guys sitting in the seat aren't the ones going to get fired if it backfires, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> They'll go with the wind, won't they? Absolutely. Except indoors today. I'm with you, winter time. So Reves will attempt a field goal, 36 yard attempt. He's kicked 36 in a row from inside 45. So uh, he's a good bet to make it. And the kick is perfect. Juan Reves with a field goal to give me. I think got a little bit out of sync. Reves kicking off and deep is Antonio Freeman. And that's going to go out of bounds. That's a, a rare miscue for Fouad Reves because that will give the Packers the ball on the 40-yard line. Well, they're trying a directional kick, and it jumped up and bit him in the rear end because, you know, in trying to keep a team inside the 20, all of a sudden you're putting it out on the 40. That's music to Brett Favre's ears, the 40. Well, you can see he's 5 to 7. You know, and the one throw that he took a chance on to go down the field to Mickens, he really, Mickens had him beat. But the ball just hung up in the air. First down on the 40-yard line. Keith Jackson is in a tight end with three wide receivers. Edgar Bennett, who ran so well, and uh, gained 121 yards on the turf in Pontiac last week is held to one this time with Harlan Barnett, the strong safety, making the play. You know, when you talk about run defense, when you talk about blitzing for the Minnesota Vikings, your eyes get drawn right to this guy right here, 58 Ed McDaniel. And I told you about him having a great year. I, I think he's having as good a year as any linebacker in football. I watched him on a bunch of tapes. He's extremely instinctive, and I'll tell you, when he shows up, he shows up in a bad mood. Second and nine, Favre, and Dorsey Levins. 
Couldn't hold on to it. That'll be third and long coming up. Well, Ed McDaniel, uh, even before this year, you had your eye on that linebacker for the bike. Absolutely. does. You know, he looks little, but he plays really big. I mean, the guy plays like he's Lawrence Taylor. What makes him good, he's a vision. he has the vision of a running back. And I'll tell you, when he shows up, he really drills it. He's built low to the ground. He's a strong guy, extremely instinctive. Six defensive backs for the Vikings on third and nine. Pressure on Farm, and the pass is threaded to Brooks, and that'll be a first down. Boy, that was a heck of a throw. And that's why Favre is one of the elite now. Oh, yeah, because of that, not only decision, but, you know, he's got something you can't teach. He can't say, all right, let's, let's learn how to throw this football. First, he gets the protection. Now, it starts to leak up in the top right with Roy Barker beating Dotson, but look at that ball come out of there. I mean, this thing is just right on the line, and it's right in between the defenders where it has to be. Brooks makes the catch. Third catch, 53 yards already for Robert Brooks. And a first down on the 48-yard line of Minnesota. Farb will go to the air again. And he drills it. And this time it's Morgan with the catch. What a catch! He had a leap high and beat Fuller to the ball. And Anthony Morgan with the catch and a gain of 16 yards as the clock is winding down towards the end of the first quarter. And that is the end of the first session with the score. The Minnesota Vikings 10, the Green Bay Packers 7. How soon you forget. Oh, I'm glad I did. Pressure and the pass is to Mark Shimura, the tight end. One of the two in the game. He picks up five yards. Corey Fuller, the tackle. That Corey Fuller, rookie out there. Remember he talked about him spitting and all that stuff. And, you know, that, that'll pass. This is a pretty good football player. You know, I think the league right now, two things. I think the league has not brought their quarterbacks along, young guys. They have not brought young pass rushers along. You don't see a lot of good young pass rushers. But where they have improved is at the cornerback position. We have two of them here today. Newsom for the Packers, Fuller for the Vikings. Second down, five. Edgar Bennett. Okay. And the hole closed up in a hurry as Bennett gets to the 25-yard line. And the three-yard gain, Jeff Brady, who has played very well in place of Jack Del Rio thus far, causing a turnover, which the Vikings capitalized on. And, of course, he has to make the calls as well in middle linebacker. Well, you see, that's that's where they, though, they'll miss Del Rio. They'll miss Del Rio from the fact that he'll get everybody going in the right place, make all the adjustments. This guy here is more aggressive than Jack. He's a little more physical at the point. Jack is a slipper and a slider, a short tackle. This kid, he wants to go and knock you out right away. Third and two. Bennett goes in motion. Wide right. Roderick Thomas missed the sack, and the ball is tipped incomplete. Corey Fuller was defending Mark Shimura, the tight end, but Roderick Thomas very nearly got far way back. This is all far. This should have been a sack. Favre just spun his way out of it. See, Thomas comes untouched and has him. Favre just keeps spinning and then loads that baby and throws it down there. Actually took a chance inside. That could have been a pick very easily. You know, this is the gambler part that Favre has in him that you're never going to get out of him. It's what makes him great, and it's what also kills him. Chris Jackie was 3-for-3 three three against the Lions a week ago. This is a 42-yard attempt, and the kick is good, and we have another tie. Craig Hendrick kicking off for the Packers. Andre Ismail bobbles the ball at the one. And gets it out to about the 17-yard line. This game is presented by authority of the National Football League and is intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the Minnesota Vikings and the National Football League is prohibited. Warren Moon will start from the 17-yard line. There's Ed McDaniel, Coach Fazio, assistant coach on the sideline. Handoff is to Ant Lee for a couple. Right now for a McDonald's game break, 
Let's return to JB in our Hollywood studio. Hey, Dick, as you know, Isaac Bruce is on a record-setting receiving yards pace. Here he continues it, gets a bullet on a go pattern from Chris Miller. He takes it 55 yards to pay dirt, his eighth touchdown of the season, all tied at seven. Let's take it back to Dick and Matt. That's a big game for St. Louis. They lose this one, they're going to start that old slide. But if they win, they stay tied with the 49ers if they beat Carolina. Second down eight. Here's Carter in motion. Moon's pass is caught by Jake Reed. First down, Minnesota. Shy of the 35-yard line. Lenny McGill defending. 14 yards down that play. Minnesota Vikings are calling a more aggressive game in their pass. They're, they're trying to push the ball down the field. You know, I've made that point all the first half, but it's, it's really showing up. And what teams had been doing to them is blitzing and trying to make read adjustments, which have side adjustments, which have all been underneath, easier to defend. Ryan Billick trying to find a way in the return engagement from their loss two weeks ago. First and 10 from the 33. Moved on a screen to Ant Lee, looking for running room. He gets by two defenders and some shoddy tackling by the Green Bay Packers results in a good gain of seven. And that's what it is, shoddy tackling. You hit it right on the head. And that's the one thing that when both these teams have had problems defensively, it's because they've missed tackles. And, and that's something that has been league-wide. I've seen poorer tackling in the last five years than I can ever remember. Here, Gilbert Brown does a nice job of forcing it back inside. Evans has his shot and just misses it. Just runs right by it. Now, part of that is Ant Lee because he has that magic to make you miss. Buffalo. Buffalo. And here's a fake to Lee on the reverse, and Moon is being chased and dropped by Sean Jones. Well, remember they faked him out last time? Ant Lee went around his side, 30-some yards. You know, you may fake this guy one time, but you're not going to do it again. Watch Sean Jones, 96. This guy's been around a long time, a very smart player. Understands the game, knows what has to happen, knows and has awareness of what guys are trying to do to him. And that's what he capitalized on there. Veteran with the Houston Oilers, and uh, when you were with him in Green Bay a couple of weeks ago, he took out the old right. film of when he was at his best with Houston and had his best game of the year, getting a sack and recovering a fumble for a score against the Vikings. That's a nice battle going on there right now between he and, and Stussy. Third and 12, and as the clock was running down, the Vikings will use a timeout. Still early in the second quarter and still tied. Third down and 12 from the 31-yard line. Moon is going to be tripped up. And that's that awareness I was talking about with Sean Jones. See how he worked upfield on Stussy? Can only take him so far. You know, Stussy's going to hook him underneath. He's going to use his arm to get under his, right under his uh, chest and shoulder. See that right there? Now, you can only go so far. Now you got to spin back inside. And then, because of the coverage down the field, Moon had nowhere to throw, and that allows him to make the play. There's Stussy, a number one draft pick last year. Corey Stringer, a number one this year, playing the other tackle. Mike Saxon will kick. Antonio Freeman, a single safety back for the Packers. Good high kick. Freeman trying to run with it. Pretty good hang time, and Freeman has one man to beat. It's Saxon. And Saxon somehow, someway gets him out of bounds. The Vikings. First down for the Packers and Edgar Bennett with terrific acceleration. That's an impressive run, and it's 19 yards before Roy Barker brought him down. Boy, this is nice. Watch how this thing opens up right here. Ed McDaniel's going to see it right away. He's going to fill a nice job by Henderson. See what happened? McDaniel, instead of trying to be physical, he jumped inside the block. Watch how he jumps inside the block. You make a mistake. You cannot do that. You have to, at that point of attack, be physical and make the back move his feet, not you. 19-yard run, the longest rush from scrimmage for Edgar Bennett this year. Two tight ends on first down from the 37. Favre is being chased by Randall, and he's going to lose this one. Randall with a great bit of pursuit and a huge loss on the play of 13 yards. That's just pure motor. You know, this was supposed to be a screen. 
and he's looking at, and Favre does a great job with his screen. See, he draws the whole defense, and now this just comes down to running. You know what Randall does here? He understands angles of defense. Look at that, and then he just crawls right up that arm. That's outstanding. As that quarterback is trying to turn the corner, you have to geometrically be right to take the right angle so that he comes right to you. That is the third sack by the Vikings in this first half. And now the Green Bay Packers are going to use a timeout. Each team has used one in this first half. We'll be back to the Metrodome. And not so. Second down and 23. Bennett in motion. Trying to get a little bit back at a time. And Anthony Morgan with a gain that time of 12 yards. I think that Anthony Morgan is, is untapped. I think he's one of those guys they don't really know how good he can be. The only way to find out is keep throwing the football. You know, he, every time I see him, he, he gets better and better. And I think what you have to do with a guy like that is pick your spots like they did right there and get the ball in his hands. Mike Holmgren is on a policy of alternating Morgan and Ingram to start each game. It was Morgan's turn today. Third down and 12. Pressure on far, dumps it off on the middle screen to Edgar Bennett. He'll be short of the first down by about four or five. Jeff Brady downfield making the tackle. That'd be a 50-yard kick right there. And they're going to give it a whirl. Well, Jackie's got the hot hand. He's kicked a 42-yarder already today. And last week, a 50-yard field goal against the Lions. And you can be sure if this were not indoors, Jackie wouldn't be trying this field goal attempt. You're right. 100% right. 50-yard attempt. And a booming kick. And the kick is going to be good. Miss Jackie. He killed that sucker. Hendrick kicking off. Ismail and Lee back. And it's going to be Condre Ismail from the five. Protecting the ball. And is uh, tackled by Matthew Dorsett. So the Packers with the lead 13 to 10. And now let's bring up to date on what's in store next week on Fox NFL Sunday. Bears and the Packers, always a big event. 49ers and Cowboys. You can't ask for better games as part of a Fox NFL doubleheader next Sunday. Check your local listings for games in your area. Say the Chicago Bears have the best offense maybe in the history of their franchise. It's the best I've seen them play. They don't even know how good they're going to be yet because Conway is still emerging. Vikings with the ball on the 28. Oh, boy, no way for Amp Lee. That's a nice job by Darius Holland. They tried that quick trap inside. Holland read it right away, and boom, he stuffed it right there. Fritz Schirmer really has a lot of uh, praise for Darius Holland. Well, it's easy to see why. I mean, this is just strength and instinct. And I'll tell you something, this guy right here, that's Randall McDaniel. That's an all-pro. And Holland read it perfectly. That's all feel inside. You're being unblocked for a reason, so you shut it back down inside. Boom. He met it. He was lower than the blocker. He wins. Fred Shermer's been around a lot of teams in a lot of years. Second down, 11. Short drop. Chris Carter. Great thing on Lenny McGill by Chris Carter, and he is close to the first down, short by about a yard. He picked up five yards on the dive at the end. You know, Lenny McGill comes up, and he, and he gets faked out of his job. Because look how he starts. He starts. His aiming point is here. You can't do that. You have to break down your feet. See this right there? Boom. Draws him outside. Now he sees the pressure come from inside. Watch him duck underneath. That's a good five extra yards on the dive. Already five catches for Carter. His big game was against the Oilers when he caught 12 for 115. Third down one, two tight ends. And Carter will call the timeout for Minnesota, their second timeout on third and one. And I'll tell you what happens when you get a guy like Chris Carter in the open field, it's really hard to tackle. So you have to be smart. And you have to, by body position, take away something that he can do. It's usually the inside. So the angle you take when you're about to tackle him is inside and give him the outside. That way, if he fakes you to the top, you know, he has to come back inside you. 
Well, the answer to today's Aflac trivia question, who was the last Vikings running back to make the Pro Bowl? You have to go back to 1977. Chuck Foreman. Well, he was a great one. And I was fortunate enough to play against him at the end of his career. Chuck Foreman, as great as he was in the 70s, would be even better in today's game because the game is more wide open and really could have used all of his movement a lot more effectively. Hold your nose. You know, it's interesting you say this is not a black and blue game, and now you mention the Bears have the best offense in their history. What's happened to that division? They've just thrown the ball all over the place, and I think it's a product of the way the rule changes have gone, and the coaches have been smart enough to take advantage of them. And the biggest one is the offensive linemen are allowed to hold inside. That's revolutionized the game. Third and one. Warren Moon has completed his last seven passes. Well, trying to make it eight. And Boy, has... that's great defense Jim right Reed. there. That is very good defense. Lenny McGill, nice job. Inside, Teague is sitting there. Evans played it perfectly. What they did, they matched up a zone on them. They made it look like it was going to be man. Moon is trying to hit the flat, but McGill jumps it perfectly. Now he has to go back inside, and that's right where Teague is sitting. This is an excellent job of the defensive coordinator, Fritz Shermer, knowing what the heck is going to happen. Jake Reed is the Viking player shaken up on the sideline. Remember last year, Reed and Carter combined for 207 catches to set an NFL record that uh, Moore and Perriman are challenging for the Detroit Lions uh, this year. But Reed is up and is walking off. They're going to try to hit Chris Carter out in the flat. And then Evans is going to pass Carter off to McGill, and then he does a very good job of transition. And he goes from outside back to inside using his safety help. That's very well done. Good defense. Mike Saxon kicking to Antonio Freeman with 546 remaining in the first half. There's a booming kick. Freeman on the line drive with a chance to return it. Antonio Freeman, good speed. Tackled at the 39-yard line. That was Orlando Thomas, the rookie, who has started a good deal of this year. When they were growing up on the streets of New York, they used to break the law. Now they are the law. The hippest cop. First down on the 39. Play fake. Far. Pass. Anthony Morgan. He's got it. Short of the first down. I like this kid. I like Anthony Morgan. He's my new favorite player. He does some good stuff. I mean, you know what he's doing? He's, he's learning how to work that DB. And Favre is not afraid to put a little heat on that thing. And Morgan's going to go down and get it. He got the first down. I, I think, hey, you want to get Morgan better? Keep throwing him footballs. That's the only way. He's just got to get out there and do it. Favre is spreading it around. First down at midfield. Edgar Bennett straight up the middle. Point by Edgar Bennett and a first down to the 36 yard line 15 yards nice job by the offensive line but Edgar Bennett is my new favorite player <laughs> changes every play I love it but look at this guy I'm mean, here they're gonna run right up inside and Bennett just squares his shoulders come down nice job by the fullback that time McDaniel does it right so you take it on you turn it back inside where your help should be but because Frank Winters has a nice block that allows Bennett to get into the second level First down on the 35 of the Vikings. Packers lead by three on the ground again to Bennett. Okay. And Bennett picks up a couple. Essera Tuaolo making the tackle, and we're winding down to four minutes remaining in the head. You know, last week, Barry Sanders had this same kind of day. You know, he had the zero, the three, 13, zero, minus two, one, three, 19, 15. 19, 15 was a bad year at this. What that means is he's just starting to get into the flow. If this game goes on, you're going to see more of those yellow numbers. Second and seven. The blitz. Far. Incomplete. Brooks was the intended receiver, and he was covered by Charles Mincy. Well, they did a good job of picking up this blitz. A nice job of Favre seeing it. He audibles out of it, and then they get the max protection. 
Watch how the tight end right there, he's just gonna get a little bit of a chip. The fullback is sitting in there, Evans. And then Brooks, this is called a side adjustment. You take it, you gotta cut back underneath. You know you have man coverage, and so by body position, you just come underneath him and expect the ball to be down low. Brooks uh, has a, an injured thumb. One of the reasons he may have dropped a few passes the last two weeks. He didn't drop that one. Third down and seven. Here comes the blitz, and Farm is knocked back to midfield. Corey Fuller and Robert Griffith. And that is the fourth sack for the Vikings fire in this blitz. first half. Yeah, that's a fire blitz. They took John Randall, they dropped him out of there. They're gonna bring Fuller, they're gonna come off the corner, they're gonna take their lineman and drop him back here. Very effective against this offense. Favre said last night, it's very effective when you, when you fire blitz us because we have so many different protections. And if you don't see it coming, it's hard for to pick it up. Hendrick will kick to Palmer back deep. Going for the sideline. And the ball will go out of bounds inside the 10. They have one timeout remaining. Boone on a rollout. Chased by Gilbert Brown. But it threw it away almost. They held Reggie White right there. They were not going to let Reggie White beat him. So they took the tight end and they just held on to him. He's going to come up. Cooper's going to go to the outside and hook, put the hook on him. Look at this. They hold on to that arm. He's not letting him let him let go. And Gilbert Brown gives chase inside. Now, if they don't hold White, White jumps back to the outside and that play is a sack. They didn't double team him that much in the first game. No, what they did was they, was they chipped on him a little bit and then they went everything away from him and they went with quick passing. Today, because they're not going quick, they have to slide to him and double him. Draw play and lead. And he gets no gain on the play. It'll be third down. John Yurkovich, very popular player in Green Bay. He's been uh, in and out, replaced by Matt Labonte at times. And Gilbert Brown as well, as the Packers have rotated their defensive linemen. And a timeout called by the Packers, their second. Take a step back and look at the division. Boone in his end zone. Being dragged down from the Boy, Sean Jones had him. And the pass is incomplete, and Jones almost had a safety. I, he's begging for it. They're not going to give it to him. You know, that is... That is the long arm of Sean Jones. You know, here's a guy who's six foot seven who can tie his shoe standing up, and this is the advantage you have. Watch this. Look at how he walks. He just reaches completely around him. Now, the reason that this thing isn't a safety is because he throws the ball back to the line of scrimmage. Anything except for this, if it doesn't go there, that thing is a safety. Saxon, back of the end zone, kicking it. And a booming kick, great kick by Saxon. Freeman on the 45, returning. He's in Viking territory. Freeman flagged down. And he is tackled by Orlando Thomas. But there's a thing to the right to the lower part of your picture. First down from the 43-yard line. Barb up the middle of Bennett on the screen. And he gets to midfield where Dwayne Washington and Jeff Brady make a tackle, gain of seven. And you can see he's been sacked four times already in the first half, and he's been hurried. They've been blitzing him a lot. They've been getting to him. What he's got to do, if, he's, if that offense is going to be effective, is not press. Throw the ball away, live for another day. Second down and three. Getting down to the two-minute warning. And the pass to Edgar Bennett. First down to the 45. And the clock will stop for the two-minute warning right now. McDaniel on the tackle. So the pass first and ten on the 45. Two-minute warning. Pressure on far. And nice pass job. is caught by Brooks. Yeah, nice job by Edgar Bennett picking up that blitz. Clock is still running. Donald Frank, one of the extra defensive backs, six of them in all for the Vikings, made the stop. So for Brooks, he has caught four passes for 57 yards already. 
Nice production out of the wide receivers. What the Vikings are doing right now is they're playing their zone, but he's mixing things up right now. He's uncharacteristically coming with some blitzes to give Farm pressure. Second and six. Quick drop, and the pass jarred loose. Ingram. Play was broken up by Dwayne Washington as Favre took another shot. Favre is getting a snot beat out of him today. And every time he's going back, he's getting waxed. And this time, this ball comes out of there on time. But Kenny Rutgers, nice block. And then Aaron Taylor just got crushed by Alexander. And Taylor fell on the back of his leg. It's amazing when you consider the Vikings have four sacks of Favre. He's ripping off the field. And he's not going to be able to go on. That is a major league deal right there. Now he got, Aaron Taylor fell on him from behind as he's turned. Oh, see, it was an ankle. Looked like he, he turned his ankle all the way around. Ty Detmer, 41. Ty Detmer over the middle on the pass to Levins, short of the first down by a yard and a half. And that'll bring up fourth down. With a minute to go, if you take your shot here and you miss it, you give them the short field, I think Holmgren's going to go for it. There's the ankle they're working on. Keith Jackson goes out of the game, and Mark Shimura comes in. It'll be fourth down, call a two from the 37-yard line. 43 seconds. The Vikings haven't stopped anyone on fourth down this year. Detmer to throw, and the pass is caught. First down to Brooks. What a big 25. Throw. Boy, Ty Detmer right on the money. And they got to hurry it up. They're out of timeouts. 13-yard gain. Less than a half a minute. Shit. That wasn't nice. No, but you know who said that? The umpire. And you know why he said it? He didn't set the ball. He put the ball on the wrong hash mark. And, and he realized And Detmer came up and picked the ball up and put it on the right hash mark. And that's why the umpire said that. You know, they have a college hash because the University of Minnesota played Ohio State last night. Right. And uh, that could be confused because it's all visible. You look there, there are four hash marks. Yeah, see, these are the college ones out here. The pros are inside. The ball was set right here. Detmer picked it up and set it back inside right in here. Second and It'll be second down and 10, 17 seconds on the clock. They are in field goal range. Detmer, pass. Oh, oh. By Brooks, and he is down at the one yard line. Oh, flag is down. Flag is down, and that stops the clock, and that may be against the Packers, and it is a false Offense, start. Number 75. There is no play, five yards, still second down. Yeah, Kenny Rutgers, number 75 on the top. And by moving early, that nullifies anything. You see, he jumped just a little bit too soon, working on Broderick Thomas. And that took away a tremendous catch by Morgan downfield. Want to remind you, coming up on the Dockers halftime, J.B., Terry, Howie, and Jimmy with the scores and highlights from around the NFL coming up on the Dockers halftime. Going into the dressing room, Brett Favre. Ten seconds remain, and Jackie comes off the field, and Favre will have x-rays taken on his ankle. And now Jackie is off, and now Detmer comes back in. So they're going to try a play with 17 seconds. They're out of timeouts. And, you know, with a new quarterback, it's kind of understandable that there might be a mix-up with the offensive line. Second and 15. This one's got to be thrown into the end zone. They may have one play before the field goal attempt. Detmer doesn't want to lose yardage, though. And he slings it, and wide open, knocked away at the last minute by Dwayne Washington. Charles Mincy was there as well. It was Mincy and Washington, and it looked like Brooks was there, standing and waiting for the ball for a touchdown. Detmer just couldn't get enough oomph on him. He has the pressure inside by John Randall. Now he sees... Brooks up there, and he just hangs this thing up just a little bit too much. A great job by Washington of just getting the finger on it. And now the field goal attempt with 11 seconds remaining. Jackie has made two already. This will be from 46 yards. 
high snap, and the kick is long enough, and the kick is good. For x-rays on his injured left ankle. Kick is on the ground, and Walsh picks it up for the Vikings. And the clock stops with two seconds remaining. Well, how about that? Ty Detmer comes in there, didn't even flinch. Knew exactly what he had to do. Hits a couple passes, takes his shot down the field. That's impressive. You hear so much about Detmer and his ability to see the field and being a very cerebral guy. If Favre's ankle is, you know, it continues to be the way it is at halftime right now where he had to walk out, this guy gets the whole second half. Interesting that Jackie came on and then all of a sudden Mike Holmgren realized he had 11, 17 seconds to try another play and it nearly got him a touchdown. Ball to 38, they load the wide receivers, three to the right. This may be the last play of the half. Moon going deep, and that will do it. It was caught by a Packer out of bounds, Butler. So that will take care of the first half. Could big question, Hendrick, the last several weeks. But here's Jackie kicking to Connery, Ismail, and Ann Lee as we start the second half. And the kick is fielded by... Ismail at the goal line. Ismail breaks a couple of tackles. And a terrific return by the wide receiver. Mike Pryor making the tackle for the Packers after a 39-yard gain by Kadri Ismail, who came in amongst the leaders, third in the NFC in kickoff returns. The numbers of Warren Moon in the first half not a lot of yards but 10 of 18 in the touchdown to andrew jordan well and i think also a shift of philosophy pushing the ball a little bit more down the field you know not that you're doing it that you're doing a bunch of it but just that you're throwing it in at the right time to stretch that defense james stewart starts at running back with charles evans on the 39 yard line and the give is to stewart James Stewart in there because Dennis Green said he's got a lot of size. Fifth round pick from Miami. Gets 11 yards and a first down with Teague making the tackle. Well, now where the heck are they running the football against, against Green Bay? You can see what they're doing. See what? See running at Reggie White? Not at all. And then away the rest of the time. And most of the time away from Reggie, it's to the inside. More at Darius Holland. First down midfield. Here's Stewart again. He just put that graphic up, and Stewart runs right at Reggie White. First NFL carry was last week against the Bears. Has been inactive most of the year, but he went right at the Packer defender in a gain of 20. A real nice job of Corey Stringer staying on Reggie White, and then David Dixon. So they just they double team him, and then Strickland does a poor job of attacking the guard. And when he flows, Stewart comes right back up inside. Now, this is a big man to Stewart. He's not a real fast guy, but functionally fast, hard to bring down. 6'2", 245, and the leading rusher in preseason for the Vikings. First down on the Packer 29. Green Bay by six, and they go to Stewart again. Protecting the ball, and he picks up five yards to the 25. Fred Strickland, the middle linebacker. Most of the time, they're going to run away from Reggie. Now, it's two things. See, they're going to run away from Reggie Wade, but they're also running to their strength, which is Randall McDaniel, number 64. Now, he is the most constant guy they've had on that offensive line. And they'll continue to run behind him for the majority of the time because you know you have a short sure thing behind him. Second down and six. Moon with his first pass of the second half, and it's dropped by Charles Evans. Evans also dropped a couple of passes early in the Bears game last Monday night. And that's a rally stopper. Yeah, that, that can kill you. And, you know, right there, it's wide open. There's and, Brett Favre. Yeah, you can see he's running around, too, <laughs> all that heavy tape. But now, you, you know, you should have had a first down. Now you have a third down. You know, and knowing the way Brett Favre is, I've always said, you know, he's the best throwing linebacker in the league because that's the way he played. I think you liked that when you told him that yesterday. Yeah, I think you're right. Third and six. And Lee back in. Going out for a pass. And Ant Lee makes the catch. Big play by Lee and a first down of the five. Butler on the tackle. 
Big third down play by the Vikings. Picks up 21 yards. Play well, had time to throw that thing. The offensive line does a really nice job of protecting it. You're going to watch how the pocket forms around him. Nice job here because Randall McDaniel does that. You can allow Moon to step up. And then Simmons on the other end tries to go for the ball. Then he's going to go right in front. See this right? Boom, right there. Went right past him and flashed. And Ampli made a miss and right up the field. Vikings with two tight ends. First and goal at the five. Boom. Touchdown. Chris Carter. Chris Carter had not taught, caught a touchdown pass in the last three games, but he gets the big one here to tie the score on the first possession of the second half for Minnesota. Chris Carter turns and looks for the ball, and Doug Evans doesn't. Watch, you're going to take him now. Just stay on your hip pocket. Now, when you turn for the ball, you have to turn back towards the man. The ball was on him so fast. It was a great job of Carter of holding off his eyes and looking for the ball to the last second. The only indication that the defensive back has that the ball's coming is the receiver looking. And Dick Stockton and Matt Millen, Brett Favre, who has been running on the sideline after x-rays proved negative on his injured left ankle, has his helmet on and ready to come in and lead the uh, Green Bay Packers. It'll be interesting to see how much mobility he has, as Matt talked about at halftime. Vikings lead by one point. Reves with the kickoff and Antonio Freeman bringing it back for the Packers. And good coverage again by the Vikings. Their special teams coverage has been terrific. Alapati that time. Versich also in. So here's Favre, who completed 14 of 20 for 156 yards, stripped of the ball for a fumble, and sacked four times in the first half. Now remember, this is his step foot. It's not his planting foot. And so it shouldn't really affect him pushing off to make the throw. But it will affect how he can move around back there. And you know that Tony Dungy, aware of that, is going to be cooking up something. First starting field position, the 21. And throwing on first down, low to Morgan, incomplete. Now, if you're a defender for the Minnesota Vikings, what you have to do is you always have to let Brett Favre know you're there. So after every throw, you give him a little push, or you make sure you hit him, you touch him, so he knows that, hey, we're always around. So he's always got to think about that ankle. Because what happens in competition when you have a hurt, in the middle of the competition, you forget about it. And so you have to remind him that it's always there. Second and 10. Give us to Bennett. Okay. Bennett gets to the 25. It'll be third and long for the Packers. Roy Barker that time. Bennett with... 60 yards rushing now on 11 carries, and he has scored the only touchdown today for Green Bay. That was on the first series of the game. Third down and six. Here comes the blitz. Favre answers it. Throw behind Ingram, the intended receiver. So. I don't know. Not especially sharp on two of his passes. You know, I, think, I don't think that was the intended receiver. I think he was trying to throw to Mickens. And he and he stuck his hand back there, Ingram did, and Mickens was right in line You're to right. make that catch. So what Mike Holmgren has done is he's gone to the quicks. Three steps, ball comes out fast. So now that information will be processed by Tony Dungy and he'll adjust his defense. So he'll probably try to get tighter coverage at the line of scrimmage to get a jam. Hendrick with a high kick. Great hang time again. David Palmer on the return. And Palmer stopped at the 35 after a 50-yard kick by Craig Hendrick. Now on the phone talking to the offensive coaches upstairs. Meanwhile, the Vikings with a one-point lead, 17-16. And they gained 41 yards rushing in the first half, but because Stewart has added some strength and speed, have nearly matched that already in one drive. First down from the 36-yard line. The give is to Stewart. And 
Stewart picks up about four or five. Strickland the tackle. Yeah, well, see, that was a nice call by Fritz Schirmer. That time he took Leroy Butler and he walked him up. And Butler was right in the hole. He just missed the tackle. I mean, that should have gone for no gain. Well, a nice chess game going on here. This is the part of football that I really enjoy. Stewart has gained eight yards a carry thus far. Second down, six. And they'll go back to him, but not that time. And he'll lose yardage. And that was George Koontz who came in and made the play. Big one for the Packers. See, the way the Minnesota Vikings are blocking this, the way you have to defend it is you have to really attack it. Now, see, this is called a bubble right here. They're going to try to get you to go this way so that he can stretch the defense. In order to counter, you go right up and attack it. Make the lineman make a decision. You see how Stussy had to redirect? When you attack it, you erase the gray area and you make the running back make the decision. Amp Lee is in as a receiver, third down and 10. No blitz this time, and Warren Moon going up top and overthrows Jake Reed. Cover downfield by Butler, and an injured player is uh, George T. holding on to his right arm, it appears. It looked like uh, Jake Reed maybe choked it down a little bit. And it could be because a nice job right there by McGill of getting the jam. He turns him over and knows where his help is. See how he kind of slows up right there? And that might be because he saw T coming over the top. So the Packers, the holes, and Mike Saxon kicking for the fifth time. Antonio Freeman again to return. Here's Freeman, flag down. Freeman still on his feet. Now finally dropped at the 27-yard line by Orlando Thomas, but there's a flag at the far side of the field at the 24. And you see the official had his hat off. That means the guy went out of bounds, so he marked it right there. Charles Jordan hurt, unable to play as the kick returner, as he normally does for the Packers, and so Antonio Freeman taking over those duties, and the penalty will be against Green Bay. Personal foul on the return, number 28, blocking a man out of bounds while it's, the player is attempting to get back in. 15-yard penalty, first down. It's Roderick Mullen who was picked off the practice list of the New York Giants a few weeks ago. Costly penalty, and the Packers will start from inside their 15. UNIC. Uh, will put up the big D, which has been pretty effective so far today against the Packers. And Green Bay starts from their 11. So you have the far ankle. They, they went with the short sets, quick throws. You see George T. It looks like he's going to be fine. Tony Dungy countered by blitzing up the middle, trying to collapse the pocket inside to force the quick throw. So now it's back on Mike Holmgren to see how he counters Dungy. Two tight ends, Jackson and Shimura. Bait and a sideline pattern intended for Brooks. Fuller was defending. Pass overthrown. So, so what Mike Holmgren has chosen to do is go with the two tight end set. Now that gives him extra protection, and it also makes you declare as a defense what your strength is going to be. And so then what you do is you just attack the weakness. So they have the defense has to declare a strength based on your formation. And so what you do is you either run or throw away from the strength. Shamura leaves the game, so Keith Jackson is the lone tight end, and they still haven't thrown to him today. Second and ten. Jackson kept in as a blocker, and the pass nearly intercepted by Jeff Brady. It was right in his hands, and that would have been a golden chance for the Vikings. And Kid Brady's playing pretty good. Yes, he is. I mean, he's attacking things up front. Nice drop here in the zone, and he read Favre all the way. See how he breaks across, and this one, I mean, he should be in a picnic right here. That should be a Yogi Bear picnic basket. Instead, it looked like it surprised him. He caused the only turnover in the game today when he stripped Favre of the ball, which ultimately resolved in a Revez field goal. Third down and 10. Pass is intercepted. 
Mincy. Charles Mincy is dropped inside the 10. Ingram never looked. Favre is pressing a little bit. Ingram was the intended receiver, started to break out. It looked like they misread each other. Favre was expecting him to come back in. Ingram broke out. Right here. See, him? See how he breaks out? I mean, Mincy is just sitting right there. And Favre either misread Ingram or they just weren't on the same page when it came to communication. Charles Mincy was not supposed to start. He had lost his job to Orlando Thomas. And then right before the game, Tony Dungy said, I'm going to put in Mincy. It's just a hunch. I think his experience could pay off. And he picks one off. And it's first and goal of the nine for the Vikings, leading by one. Here's Stewart looking for running room. But fumble! And it's still Vikings ball. Vikings retain possession. Sean Jones made the tackle and caused the fumble. Hey, that Stewart is a strong running back. This is my first real good look at him. But, I mean, he kind of runs straight up and down so you can get a hit on him, but he doesn't stop. Look, that's 290 pounds of Sean Jones. And look how he carries him. And then he takes on Evans. The ball flops out of there. Boy, that one was live right away. And a great job of awareness of Stewart getting back. But this kid's a strong man. Stewart recovered his own fumble. Andrew Jordan in a tight end. He's caught a touchdown pass already today. Second and goal from the nine. There's a pass. Oh, wow. Great catch by Jake Reed. Warren Moon's third touchdown pass of the day. And the Vikings, for the second time, take advantage of a Packer turnover. Very nicely done by Jake Reed, working on Doug Evans. Uses the body position. See how Teague bit up there? That opened that up with the safety. Evans had to hold the outside, expecting maybe a little help inside. Wasn't there, six point. Wadra Bays. Extra point is perfect. And the Minnesota Vikings in the second half have scored two touchdowns and now have opened up a 24 to 16 to lead over Green Bay. The Packers and now the Minnesota Vikings playing inspired football. Warren Moon with three touchdown passes. The last one coming to that man, Jake Reed, have opened up a 24 to 16 lead with 8.38 remaining in the third quarter. Remember right at the start of the game, said if the Packers don't turn the ball over, they'll win. Two costly turnovers have given up 14 points. Short kick by Reves and Antonio Freeman brings it out to the 33-yard line. I'm sorry, this touchdown is a really nice call by Brian Billing. They're going to play action inside. That They're going to go man here, man here, man here. The safety's going to come up because this is his man. But because they play action, it forces him to stay a little bit up and opens this wide open. That's a very nice call by Billick and well executed. And then you can't overlook the great catch by Jake Reed on the other end. Fernando Smith has uh, gone in for Roy Barker at defensive end. Let's look at Brett Favre before his injury. 14 for 20, 0 for 5 with an interception since coming back after the ankle injury. First down on the 33. Edgar Bennett looking for running room up the middle. And Brady and McDaniel both stop him dead and right now for a McDonald's game break let's return to James Brown in our Hollywood studio the big Falcons on the roll take a look at Jeff George little swing pass here screen pass to Bertie Manuel he's taking it down near pay dirt 37 yards that set up a one yard bull run by Craig Ironhead Hayward Atlanta on top comfortably back to Dick and Matt and Atlanta heading for a six and three record second and 11 from the 32 Far as Bennett and Ed McDaniel wouldn't let him get by and a gain of five. And you could feel the momentum that the Minnesota Vikings are starting to have. I mean, you could just feel it through the stadium. You could see the way the guys are playing defensively. They're attacking things. They're being a little bit more aggressive. You know, that's what happens in this league. When you got to be like a piranha. When you smell that blood, you got to go attack it and take advantage of it when you have it. Minnesota has outgained Green Bay 70 to 8 in this third quarter. Third and 
and six. Barr with a short drop, completes it to Ingram, and he's got the first down. That Donald time, Frank the tackle. And that time they were on the same page. You see, Favre came up, read the front, went with an audible, and, and, they, and Ingram got the call and was perfect. Now, the last time on that interception, it looked like miscommunication. Ingram went outside. Favre was expecting to stay inside and threw it right to Vincent. Only the first catch of the day for Ingram, who caught five last week. At the 45 of the Packers, here's Bennett. Good hard run to the outside by Edgar Bennett, and he picks up six. Corey Fuller defending. That's a good football player right there. That Edgar Bennett. You know, if Edgar Bennett just had one more step, he would be in the elite. He has great feet in the hole. He's a tough guy. He'll block you. He's a very complete player. He's got good speed, but not outstanding speed. If he just had another step, he'd really be unbelievable. Bennett and the man who made the play, Corey Fuller, were teammates at Florida State. I wonder where that hug came from. <laughs> Second down, four at the Viking 49. Here's Bennett, nothing. That time, the Vikings wouldn't let him get underway. And that'll bring up third down, maybe a loss of one on that play. Now, there's a surprise right in the middle of it again is Ed McDaniel. You know, it's funny, we talked about him in the first half, but whenever we watch defensive tapes, and you know, you pour over the tapes, the one guy whose number kept on popping up all the time is Ed McDaniel. Pass game, he's there. Run game, he's always there. And he's an effective blitzer. Third down convergence today, four for 11 for the Packers. Third and five for midfield. Barnes pass, and the pass is caught by Robert Brooks, and a flag is down back at the line of scrimmage or behind it. They're gonna, yeah, they're going to get Fernando Smith for roughing the passer. Smith, who replaced Barker at defensive end, a little bit too much getting to Brett Favre. But look, I guarantee that it was talked about that you have to get to Brett Favre. You have to hit him, Brett let him know you're there. Defense number 95, roughing the passer. See, they're getting for throwing him down at the end. You brought up the fact that you want to let him know that yeah, you have the to. injured ankle. You really do. And, and you know, the throwing part at the end was probably unnecessary. More than that bad a call. I mean, that, that bad a deal. That is the first penalty of the game against the Vikings as Smith leaves and Roy Barker comes back into the lineup. Yeah, I told you about Brett Favre. Now, you see his right ankle is the one that he has to push off of. The front foot is the one that's hurt, and that's his step foot. Packers on the Viking 26. And the pitch to Bennett. Nowhere to go. And a great play, tripping him up, Derek Alexander. And a gain of one for Bennett as we have four minutes and 40 seconds now remaining in the third. Derek Alexander, the number one pick, you know, he's, you ask, what are his strengths? You ask the coaching staff, and say, well, you know, not that fast, not that strong. He just does a lot of things well. And, and so you watch him on tape, and you can see it starting to come. But he is raw. I mean, he's, his best years are ahead of him. He needs a good training camp to learn how to rush the pass. Barb on a slant <laughs> to Morgan, and he was hit by Dwayne Washington. That's two big plays for Dwayne Washington. The other one really was big when he prevented a touchdown on a deflection. And uh, Morgan shaken up. Well, this is a nice, nicely calculated job by Washington. He hears the audible, and he thinks it's going to be a quick look at him close. Boom, that falls right there. I'm not so sure if Morgan got hurt more from the hit or from the ball, because that ball was rifled out there. Keith Jackson was saying yesterday he wasn't sure what Favre would throw. He says, but he's a quarterback that can lay it in nicely and also can really drill it. He saw that last week. Yeah, he said the ball comes right on top of it really fast. Timeout charged. We'll be back.
more than denim in every pair of Levi's jeans. The human face. Difficult terrain. Perfect for Braun's new three-stage shaving system. One foil removes short hairs. An integrated cutter, longer hairs. The second foil completes the job. For Braun's closest shave yet. True perfectionists never cut corners. However, they will, on occasion, have to sand them. Introducing the Versapack Cordless Detail Sander from Black & Decker. It's how things get done. It's a blast from the past. All your favorite arcade games like Asteroid, Centipede, Defender, and Galaga. So polish up your old moves. You'll need them to survive the arcade classics. Now available in two-in-one game packs for Game Boy and Super Game Boy, baby. Tonight at 8.30, 7.30 Central. Can Gina cut it as a housewife? I'll be damned if I'm gonna eat another chicken pie. A brand new Martin after The Simpsons tonight. Anthony Morgan helped off the field and Ingram has replaced him for the Packers. Vikings lead 24 to 16, our game summary. Minnesota has capitalized on two turnovers and has outscored Green Bay 10-0. Moon with three touchdown passes and Brett Favre has been sacked four times. Also suffered an ankle injury. X-rays were negative, but he's trying to bring the Packers back now, third and nine from the 25 of the Vikes. Big play. And the pass intercepted. Orlando Thomas picks it off in the end zone. Bad decision by Favre. Thomas is hanging back there. He tried to get the tight end going down the seam, but the safety was just sitting there. Watch, he's going to try to send some more. He's going to try to send him right down here, but the safety is sitting over the top. This is, see that they're going to do, they're going to trail him. See, they try to run, make the ball go high, so your safety has a chance to make the play. That's just well-executed defense. You get the jam. Now watch the backer. He's going to run underneath him, or Griffith, rather. You're going to make that ball. If it's going to be thrown, it has to come high. And that is the third interception of the year for Thomas and another mistake for Favre. So the Minnesota Vikings have taken over control of this game on both sides of the ball. And the third turnover. I think Favre is pressing. First down on the 20. Boom. Goes up the middle of Thomas on a screen. Well, he is big at 245 and tough to bring down. He's a strong guy. I mean, I'm really impressed. The first tackle doesn't get him down. You saw the shot we had of of Sean Jones, all 290 pounds on him, and he carried Sean Jones along. To that time, the backer comes up, makes the first hit. It looks to me like with Stewart, you have to hit him and hold on and wait for your help to show up. So far, since he's come back from the injury, three for 10, 19 yards, and two interceptions. Second and seven on the 23. Here's Ant Lee. He's going to be trapped behind the line of scrimmage by Leroy Butler. But make it Sean Jones. And a flag is down. Report on Anthony Morgan is that he has a sprained ankle and may return. And the holding penalty against Minnesota. So it's been a day of injuries for the Packers with Teague, Morgan, and Favre. Here's Morgan with the ankle. Holding, offense, number 64. Penley is declined, third down. Randall McDaniel, they decline it. It'll be third down and long. Ty Detmer getting loose, just in case. No question that Brett Favre's effectiveness has been hampered to a great degree since he's come back from the injury and Tony Dungy's had a role in it too. Third and nine. Move up the middle and wide open was Padre Ismail, and that would have gone for the touchdown. That was a big third down play. Yeah, it really was. Moon had him wide open. Safety was gone. Nobody in the middle of the field. Ismail had gotten behind the corner. Watch the safety up top. He's reading Moon. Now he's going to look to the right, and look how this opens wide up. See that? Nothing there. That's a big break for the Packers. 
because he was open. See Bob Balicenti right there, DB coach. He was just telling George Teague, you have to stay in the middle. Mike Saxon with the kick. And over end, Antonio Freeman flags down. Freeman to the 47 yard line. Orlando Thomas, who has made several special teams tackles today. Ty Detmer looks like he'll be getting the call with Brett Favre not producing enough and uh, maybe hurting with that ankle. So Detmer's going to get the chance again. And this penalty looks like it's going to go against Minnesota. There's Favre, who just lost his sharpness since that ankle injury. Unsportsmanlike on the kicking team, number 81 was out of bounds and failed to return in the prescribed time. Finley is declined. First down. Chris Walsh of the Vikings. So Packers have good field position, but they have a new quarterback again at Denver. Second half possessions for the Packers. Hasn't been pretty for them. They've had to kick it away and two interceptions. And they got the ball in Viking territory before that last pick in the end zone by Thomas. Ingram and Brooks, the wide receiver. And Detmer with time, and his throw to Brooks is caught. No, incomplete. He did not hold on to the ball. Covered by Corey Fuller. That time, they went with play action to hold the backers, and then they were just looking for the one-on-one -on -one matchup outside. Brooks had him, had to come back to that ball. Detmer threw it low and outside where it had to be. Detmer, former Heisman Trophy winner. Hasn't played much. Three attempts two years ago. Second and ten. Complete to Brooks again with Fuller all over him. That'll be third now and ten. Or Fuller's playing himself a pretty good game. And he's out there man to man. This is pure man coverage. And you hold your outside, you stay square, let him declare, and then close on the ball. Had this ball been thrown down a little bit lower, it would have been a completion. I think Fuller's holding up pretty well. I think he's going to be a pretty good football player. Vikings going with two rookies for the most part. And Thomas and Fuller, but Mincy started today, and he had an interception. Third and ten with four wide receivers for Detmer. Short pass, and it's caught. First down. That's Robert Brooks with the reception. Nice job of Brooks getting inside of Jackson. 25. And now you know you're going to have deep help. It's in the middle of the field. So Brooks is going to try to push him and then get inside of here. See how he tries to make him turn his shoulders. Brady is hanging on the inside, but he has to honor the underneath back. And when he goes away, that opens up the middle of that uh, coverage. Anthony Morgan being uh, taken off on the cart. And now a timeout has been called by the Packers. They have the ball on the Viking 38. It is their first timeout of the second half. Coming up next week, on Fox NFL Sunday, big doubleheader. Most of you will see the, these Packers against the Chicago Bears in a pivotal NFC Central battle. The late game, the 49ers and the Cowboys, much awaited since the beginning of the season. This is the lineup for the game one and the second half of the doubleheader on Fox. Yeah, I think that San Francisco game, you know, with Steve Young coming back, obviously that helps him, but the injuries have really made a difference. You know, Brent Jones won't be there. So Popson will take over. And then William Floyd is out. And they signed a young back to take his spot. So this one's going to come down to how well Steve Young is. If he's 100%, he can use his own legs to beat him like he did last year. Remember when he came out and he ran? Made a big difference in that football game. That extra dimension that he brings the 49ers attack. You better believe that the Dallas Cowboys are going to try to get some hits on him. Because he's coming off that shoulder. You want to make sure he feels it. Denver coming back into the game was a coach's decision by Mike Holmgren. You saw Morgan, his ankle will be x-rayed. First down on the 38 of Minnesota. Denver with a pump fake, fires it, and uh, looked like it 
slid out of his hand a bit. Shimura was the intended receiver. Well, you want to get a whack on him, too. You're going to watch inside the pass rush. John Randall, number 93, goes to the power move. Nice arm over on Aaron Taylor. And what happened was because the pocket collapsed, Detmer is not, see, he can't really step into this ball. See how his feet are together? Second and 10 for the Packers at the Vikings. Tuolo had collapsed the pocket and didn't allow him to step into it. There's a delay, nothing doing. Yeah, Bennett, Martin Harrison, and uh, Esra Tuaolo combined that time. As the clock runs, we have a minute 39 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Vikings in control to this point, 24 to 16. They led 10 to 7 after one quarter. Packers had a 16 to 10 lead at the half, thanks to three Chris Jackie field goals in the second period. But so far, the second half has been all Minnesota. Third down nine. Detmer's pass, and it, it is ruled a catch by Terry Mickens and a first down. Fuller arguing with the side judge, Howard Slavin, to no avail, and the Packers get a big first down. Watch the ball. He has to have two feet in bounds. The body can't be. There's one. There's two. That's a Got nice it. catch. That's a good call. Well, they're all in all they want, but watch where the foot is. See, the foot is still in bounds. He has control. Yes, sir. Yeah, you can see the green. That's a good catch. That's a nice call by the officials. A good drag with the right foot. What a drag. <laughs> kind oh. of a drag. <laughs> so the second catch of the year for Terry Mickens gives the Packers a first down on the 26. Kepler looking one way, firing, caught by Edgar Bennett at the one. Boy, that was a great job by Detmer. Did you see how he looked that coverage off? He looked to his right to draw it over, knew that he had Bennett flying on the sideline, and boom, ball came right in. Watch his eyes. Look up top. See, he's looking to the right. Now he knows where the other guy is. Then he just waits for it to come, and there it comes. That's outstanding quarterback play. And that's a guy without much experience, except in practice. And nine seconds remaining in the third quarter. It'll be first and goal for Green Bay. William Henderson joins Bennett in the backfield. And again, to Bennett. No, it sounded like the, by Brady it sounded like the, the whistle. End. Yeah, that's what it was. The whistle, the whistle went before the play. And so they will get that down back, I believe. It'll go as no play. Yeah. Time expired on the third quarter. There is no play. That was no play. Matt was right on that. And that is the end of the third quarter with the score. The Minnesota Vikings 24, the Green Bay Packers 16, and Fox NFL Sunday will continue after these messages from your local Fox station. Prepare yourself for the Invaders. A four-hour miniseries begins next Sunday. Nothing can stop you. No one can block you. Nothing can get in your way once you've seen the no annual fee NFL Visa Card. Now available from MBNA America, the exclusive issuer of the NFL Team Visa Cards. This card lets you take your favorite team everywhere you take your visa. How do you get yours? Run, leap, dash. Just get to the phone and call 1-800-NFL-9919. Apply now because when you use your no annual fee NFL visa, you get a low introductory annual percentage rate. Plus these crowd pleasers, the NFL 100 Greatest Touchdowns video free, NFL Report the Insider's Guide, and up to 20% discounts on select officially licensed NFL merchandise. So let nothing get in your way. Call 1-800-NFL-9919 now to apply for your no annual fee NFL visa with the NFL Shield or any team logo. Call 1-800-NFL-9919 now. Operators are standing by. This is NFL Sunday Ticket. Start of the fourth quarter here at the Metrodome with the Vikings leading by eight, but the Vikings, the Packers, are within a yard of the end zone. It'll be first and goal as we start the fourth quarter. Dick Stockton and Matt Millen. It has would have been a sizzler of a game between these two division foes. Here 
is Edgar Bennett, and he's going to be stopped. Might have lost the yard, and that was Jeff Brady, who's playing a sensational game in place of Jack Del Rio. He really is playing well. And here's what he does well. See, he sees it, and he doesn't waste any time in processing. He just goes ahead and hits it. What he believes, what he sees, that's his strength. That's a great job. The attack right away ran right through the shoulder of the guard. You can't play it any better. There's Jack Del Rio. But Brady has filled the bill today. Second and goal. They send Henderson wide left, and here is a pass wide open. Touchdown to Mark Shimura. Nice call. Now the decision to go for two to tie it up, and it would seem to be the logical move here. Yeah, it's already made. They're going for two. That was a nice call. You went with the play action. The aggressiveness of the backers are going to suck up, and it's really tough to cover a tight end down in there when you have play action. Shimura just takes a little chip, goes right out, nobody's on him. And that little toss was the first NFL touchdown pass by Ty Detmer. And the first attempt coming up for the Packers on the two-point conversion. Trailing by two. If they make it, they tie it up. Detmer on a rollout. Detmer throws, tipped, and it may have been caught. It was. Oh, man, there was a collision down the bottom of that. Thing. And it was caught. Who got up? Was it Shimura again? I'll tell you what, it Mark, was. He got drilled. That's good. Watch the collision. This ball's going to get popped up. They tried to go with the pick. It wasn't there. Now he tries to force it. Watch the tip. Now here comes Shimura. Boom! Oh, that's a shot. Fuller tipped it in the air, and Mark Shimura, who just caught the touchdown pass, catches the conversion to tie it at 24. Ford introduces the all-new Taurus for those who see life as a journey and want to enjoy the ride. Its speed-sensitive steering and responsive new suspension help you take new roads with confidence, while the powerful new 24-valve Duratec engine can go up to 100,000 miles between recommended tune-ups, which means you can go as far as your dreams. The all-new Ford Taurus. Tending your land, getting your hands back in the soil, working with the sun on your back. Could anything be more rewarding? Yeah, paying someone else to do it for you. Like Ned, Joe, and Tom. That's what Visa Gold's for, with enough purchase power to turn your yard green. And what could be more relaxing than mowing it yourself? Paying Al. Visa Gold, it's everywhere you want to be. This is the future of corporate computing. No, wait. This is. Oops, sorry. Scratch that. The future is definitely this. On second thought, it'll be this, we think. There are many visions of the future. Most will turn out not to be right. But we engineer our network systems in anticipation of uncertainty. So no matter which way it all goes, you can't go wrong. Digital, whatever it takes. Fox NFL Sunday is brought to you by the all-new Ford Taurus, a look you've never seen from a name you know well. By digital personal computers. By Sony Maximum Television. Hear and see everything you pay for. And by the NASDAQ stock market, the stock market for the next hundred years. Tied up at 24, Mark Shimura, who made the amazing catch of the two-point conversion, but what set it up was the touchdown. Yeah, and what a nice job right here on play action. Shimura just goes inside and looks right away because everything faked inside, the backers and everybody sucked up. And then the two-point conversion, it was just pure effort by Shimura. Balls in the air, Orlando Thomas puts the shot right on the shoulder. Thomas was down, Shimura held on to the ball, and then you see him on the sideline, they're checking his shoulder strength. That's one of those things where you get one of those burners goes down the shoulder. Nine plays, 54 yards, and the Packers tie it up. This is the third tie we've had today. Jackie kicking off to Ismail. Padre at the seven-yard line. And he is stopped short of the 25. Well, that's a big 
scoring drive for the Packers because the Minnesota Vikings in, since intermission have had the impetus all their way. Yeah, they really have. And, you, and like I said before, you can start to feel the momentum change and the defense was starting to take over. And Ty Detmer came up with some big plays, a real nice job of that ball to Bennett to, to get the big play. And it was all Detmer. Craig Hendrick, the kicker who normally kicks off, hurt his toe, and that's why Jackie had to come back in that role for the Packers. First down on the 24. James Stewart, the big running back from Miami. He'll move the pile. And right now for a McDonald's game break, let's return to James Brown in our Hollywood studio. JB? Hey, Dick, take a look at how Detroit's trying to make it a contest. Scott Mitchell looking, looking, no one's open, so he decides to take it himself. He finds pay dirt. Now Detroit within two touchdowns of Atlanta in the fourth. Back to Dick and Matt. Anyway, here's the story in the NFC West with Atlanta, St. Louis, San Francisco, all tied at five and three coming into today's play. Second down, six. Again, Stewart, first down, and more. Much more. Close to midfield. Stewart has made a big difference in the second half. That was a 20-yard pickup. Oh, the inside blocking of this offensive line. Randall McDaniel, Christie all inside. Look at McDaniel getting a push on Yurkovich. And then a good job, the fullback in on the backer. And let me tell you something, this is a big man coming through the hole. You got to come up there, you got to wrap your arms, and you have to be physical. 245 pounds, heck, he just throws people off of him. Nine carries, 62 yards. First down on the 48th of Minnesota. Stewart with a hole, and it was Fred Strickland and Coos who knocked it back a bit. Not an easy task. Well, I mean, you have to fight fire with fire, and so that time Gilbert Brown put all 340 pounds on him from the sideline. So you got 240 versus 340. 340 usually wins. Usually. Usually. Look at the front porch on that guy. Watch Gilbert Brown. Gets off the block, does a nice job. Look at the hit. Boom. And it's trickling right under the chin. That's good physical football. Ant Lee in the backfield on second and eight. Fake. Pass caught by Adrian Cooper. He'll have a first down for Minnesota. To the 42-yard line of Green Bay. Hey, we got ourselves a game, boys. Yeah, both these offenses have come alive. Stewart's made that running game pick up. The inside running behind McDaniel, and then Moon's got his confidence right from the start of the game. He's been throwing well. Well, this is a Minnesota team really up against it after losing three in a row for only the second time in Dennis Green's reign. And the Packers, who want to prove that they belong, and have to win road games like these. From the 41, another pass attempt by Moon. He's gone deep. And the pass to Carter is knocked away. And a great play by Evans. Boy, he's a competitive guy, Doug Evans. Remember last time they played two weeks ago, the tremendous game that he played on Chris Carter? And now Carter has beaten him a couple times today, but this kid keeps competing. Remember also at the beginning of the game, we talked about Warren Moon was going to take his shot for the big play, and this is what they want to do. Use Chris Carter. Anytime the ball's in the air, there's an opportunity for a big play. That time, you see this great picture. Watch Evans as he goes up, gets the hand inside. That's good defense, that's good football. Can't draw it up better than that. Again, a pass. Second and ten. Caught by Carter. Gets away from Butler. Going for the sticks. Evans tried to prevent him from getting the first down, and I don't think he succeeded. Amp Lee got hit on trying to block on that play. It is a first down for the Vikings, but Lee is shaken up. This has been a hard-hitting, tough game, as you would expect from these two division foes. Tie, fourth quarter, and we'll be back. It started with the idea of giving truckers a better two-way radio system. Then with a war chest of $3,000, they decided to take on the largest company on earth. When the smoke cleared, 
MCI had changed telecommunications forever. Where in today's world do you find such aggressive, fast-growing companies? Actually, there's a list of them printed every day. NASDAQ, the stock market for the next hundred years. Can McDonald's Chicken McNuggets make you feel like a kid again? Can they bring you closer together? Can they give you a thrill? Can they be just the break you've been waiting for? Of course they can. Can they make you see double? As a matter of fact, yes. With McDonald's two for two. Two tempting six-piece chicken McNuggets or two McChicken sandwiches for just two dollars. So, can they give two empty, unfulfilled hands something very entertaining to do? Absolutely. Have you had your break today? I'm in this carpool where everybody wants to drive. Your turn to drive. My car. Because everyone agrees that my Ford Contour handles like nothing else. I'll drive. Driving, okay, you're driving. Yeah. Can you believe it? But when they find out it's loaded with things like air conditioning, rear window defrost, air filtration system, and a stereo cassette for a great low price, they'll get their own. And our carpool will be a convoy. Tonight, Homer's on a quest to be the world's heaviest man. I don't want to look like a weirdo. I'll just go with a moo-moo. On a brand new Simpsons tonight. Tune up your hearing aid and listen to this, the sounds of football. I beg your pardon. <laughs> yeah, that stuff, you know, it feels a lot worse than it sounds, let me tell you. I think every person who's a football fan who likes to watch it on television, they owe it to themselves if they could ever do it to get on the sidelines of a game because you have no idea how big the guys are, how fast they're moving, and how violent the hits are. And it happens every single play. And it happened to Amp Lee, former 49er, who's shaken up. James Stewart, the running back on first down on the 31 of the Packers. Boom gets hit as he throws, but he completes it to Carter and wrestle down. Boy, by that's a Jordan great play Brady. by Newsom. Loses the ball, at least there was a fumble, but it was blown dead. Nice play by Newsom. Two things. First of all, he made the tackle in the open field one-on-one, -on -one, and that's a tough thing to do. And then second of all, he had the presence to try to get that ball out. He's going against one of the premier receivers in the league. Now watch this, open field, come in, nice job. Sets the feet, gets the ball out. See that? If he has that, you know, I'm not so sure that's not a fumble. He pulls this thing out here. It's clearly it's open. But see who wrestles it out at the end. He might have done it. I think that's it. I think that's him. Chris Walsh has checked in on second down and five. Boone loses the ball. Packers have it. And I believe the Packers recovered. We'll wait, though. The Vikings, that slipped out of his hand. He went for the pump fake. And in the course of that pump fake, it just slipped out. It appeared Kuntz pounced on it, but Stringer got it. Corey Stringer with the recovery. Well, heck, Stringer got more pounce to the ounce. That's the reason. And look at that. And watch how he's going to go with the pump fake, and the ball just slips out. See right there? Oh, I see what happened. It hit Evans in the shoulder. And look at Warren. <laughs> Warren's not quite sure if he should jump in the middle of that thing or not. I think he knows not to. Third down and 12. It'll be a long field goal attempt for Reves. Oh, Reggie White. And the pass up the middle. Caught by Carter. Big catch and a first down. Chris Carter bobbled it and held onto it at a gain of 14 yards. His ninth catch of the game. Reggie White knew this was the time for a big play, so he went with the hump move. Watch what he does to the rookie. Now knows he has single up the field, throw him, come back inside. Moon felt it and felt the bounty. Now watch Carter. Should have been a clean catch. He bobbles it, gives it a little bit more drama than it has to. But he made sure he came down with that thing. This is his second most productive game of the season. Nine catches, 91 yards. First and 10 from the 19. And the Vikings will call a timeout. So each team has two timeouts remaining with 8.55 on the clock. Sony Maximum Television presents Sounds of the Game with John Madden. Hey, hey, if you want to really feel the game, you got to hear what's going on down here. The booms, the bams. 
Just listen. Find out why Bill Parcells is not only a master motivator, but a candid coach right after this. You may be cheating yourself. When you rent a video, you're paying for great pictures. You're also paying for great sound. Big Hollywood surround sound. It's on your cable channels, even your favorite TV shows. But if you don't have the right stuff, you're not hearing it. Isn't it time you got everything you pay for? <laughs> Maximum television, only from Sony. We can't play. We can't play. We're too stupid. Hey, if you're not here at all, you're not getting the full impact. Whoa! Wow! You can look at other people's landscapes, or you can find your own. You know, sometimes where the pavement ends is where the world begins. We only went to four-star restaurants until we found one with four billion stars. Isn't it amazing how opening one door can open up so many others? Ford Explorer, because the world's too big to be left unexplored. They were supposed to return to Earth, but someone doesn't want them to get there. The bomb had to be set by someone aboard the Saratoga. A brand new space above and beyond tonight. Here's Warren Moon, and uh, we've talked about how important it is for so many people in this game. How about number one? Well, remember two weeks ago against Green Bay Packers, the same team, he took himself out at the end of the game. And a lot of people talked about, you know, why would you take yourself out? I asked him about it. He said, look, we were down 35-14. We had five minutes left. That was a game that I didn't want to get beat up in. And to be honest with you, I think it was a right decision, but I think it should have come from the head coach and not the player. First and 10 from the 19. James Stewart driven back. Well, he's a strong guy. Gilbert Brown and uh, Sean Jones, Fritz Schirmer, trying to find an antidote to James Stewart, who has been impressive. Nearly uh, eight yards a carry here in the second half. It looks like the, the antidote is going to be gang, gang tackle. Wrap your arms. When you have a he's going to run right through an arm tackle. You can't do that. You've got to get your helmet on him, and you've got to run through him. Second down, the 11. Green Bay has managed one yard in this quarter, but they've tied it up 24. It'll be second and 11. And that one yard was the touchdown. Boom falls down. He had a trip over one of his uh, offensive linemen going back. Yeah, it looked like the center or, or, or maybe one of the guards. But in either case, it came from the push of Darius Holland right inside. Watch Moon's feet right inside. There's the feet. And what it was was David Dixon. And Darius Holland got a push on Dixon. Dixon had to set his feet, and he set one of those big old dogs right on top of Moon's feet. Well, they're going to credit a sack to Reggie White. That's cheap. Easiest he'll one it. he'll ever have. Eleventh <laughs> play of the drive, third and 14. And Lee in the lineup. Moon being rushed by Reggie White. Yeah, that's you know you can trade off the cheap sack for that rush right there. Reggie White's got a little bit of pain coming on him, too. That was an outstanding rush by White. This time, you saw the power earlier. This time, he uses speed to get to the top. This has become a game of attrition as both Sean Jones and Reggie White are shaken up. Watch Reggie White on the top. He's going to use the speed to go around the corner of Corey Stringer. Right upfield, arm under, goes right by him. Holy smokes, they both hit each other. You got two tons of fun. They're both laying down. Officials timeout as both Jones and White collide. And we'll have a timeout. 7.40 on the clock. And this is a serious injury. Reggie's still down. Ford introduces the all-new Taurus for those who want to have it all and take it all with them. For those who have an eye for design and a passion for performance. And for those who want the latest in safety, including standard dual airbags and available anti-lock brakes. The all-new Ford Taurus Wagon. For those whose dreams are a little bigger. Any insurance agent knows lightning can strike any day. Fortunately, your Allstate agent knows it can strike any night, too. 
So if it does, you can call your agent anytime, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. A claim specialist is standing by to help you right away. If your insurance can't deliver claim service day or night, in a flash, maybe you should switch. You're in good hands with Allstate. I'm Dave Clark. I'm a big eater. Now tell the court where you were for lunch Tuesday. I was eating a Wendy's Big Bacon Classic combo. You know, a quarter pound of fresh beef, three strips of bacon, cheese, toppings, biggie fries, and a drink. Sounds like a big meal. Did you finish it? Every bite. Really? Well, liar. Oh, liar. Oh, of course. Isn't it true it was too big for you? It was too big. <laughs> Get off the stand. Wendy's Big Bacon Classic combo is only for big eaters. It was too big. Don't let this happen to you. Reggie White up top, Sean Jones down the bottom. Reggie White's going to come across the top, and as he's coming in, it looks like Sean Jones' head hits him right in the quad. Now you have right there, so you have boom, right inside on the hip of the quad, and then he goes down, or Sean Jones is down. But I mean, it's one thing when you're a well-liked player like Reggie White, everybody kind of pulls for it. You can see right inside, boom, right there. When Reggie White gets hurt, you know, usually a guy gets hurt, everybody just kind of flops around, you wait for him to go off the field. When Reggie White gets hurt, heck, everybody's out there. They got the your team, they got the Viking team, and they're, heck, everybody just patting him on the back and talking to him. He's going to be all right. Always popular is Reggie White as he walks off. Now, watch earlier, and you're right, there was many Vikings as Packers around the fallen Reggie. Well, that, and that's a testament to the greatness of the player, and more important than the player. Forget the player. That's a great person. Well, he uh, helped put the Packers back on the map when he decided he wanted to play with them. The man's got character and class. You don't find him. Forget football. I mean, in everyday life, you don't find him. Juan Reves will try a field goal. There have been three ties in the game. This will be a 42-yard attempt. Vikings for the third time trying to take the lead. Well, yeah, what happened is now the kick would have been good. Yeah, but they got the Packers got the Vikings to jump off sides. So that's going to go five yards back they further. 47 yards. False start. Offense. Prior to the snap, five yard penalty. Repeat the down. Fourth down. Interesting that Rebays, who has kicked 37 in a row from 45 or less, that would have been for less. This is more now. This will be a 47-yard attempt. We have had three ties in the game at 7-7, 10-10, and 24-24. This will be 48 yards. Make it 47. in the holder and the kick is up and the kick oh, is no good so quad reveys as a result of that penalty they moved it back five yards beyond the magic number of 45 and Amazing. it was wide left well you were right on the button with that i mean you move it back and the numbers don't hold up and the score remains tied at 24 with 737 to go in this game so you look at a big play and what you get is a is a green bay packer defender moving quick to make the offensive line jump off sides. And I think it was Freddie Strickland, number 55. Watch him right there. He moves quick, and he's trying to get somebody to jump, and he finds him right here. See, he jumps off side. And after the field goal try, the Packers are elated. That's a big play by Freddie Strickland. And the Pack has the ball. First down from the 37. Ty Bentler goes underneath to Anthony Morgan, who was shaken up earlier and came back. He had x-rays on a sprained ankle. And uh, he did indeed come back. A gain of four yards. There's Brett Favre, who had to leave the game in the second half with a sprained ankle. And Ty Detmer has come in and threw his first NFL touchdown pass. Nothing spectacular, just a two-yard toss to Shimura. Well, he did it so well, it looked easy. Winding down to seven minutes remaining. Second and seven. Detmer will run with it. 
And he'll be short of a first down by two yards. It was McDaniel and Broderick Thomas to put the seal on it. And slow is Broderick Thomas slow getting up. Boy, this is. Guys are dropping all over the place yeah. today. You know, I got to be honest with you. It's really amazing, as violent as the game is, that not that more guys don't get hurt. I mean, I think it's a testament to the conditioning of the athlete, and also how far the the, the uh, equipment has come to. While they work on Broderick Thomas, we want to remind you that at the end of this game, Matt and I will select the Miller Light Player of the Game. The other thing is, guys, no matter how much they're hurt, their competitive nature always takes over, and they want to come back and play. And that that always is amazing. You know, here's a guy with a. If you were every day walking around out there, you hurt your ankle, they say, ah, six weeks, you'll be fine. In the National Football League, you hurt your ankle, they say, ah, get right back in there. I mean, Todd Stucey is a perfect example. Dislocates his shoulder, waits all of 10 minutes, and goes back out and play. Knowing he's going to have surgery after the season. Yeah, well, what do you do? You, all you do is strap it up and keep playing. Roderick Thomas is going to come off. There's Stucey, who. Looks like he's going to be quite a find as an offensive lineman. Tuaneo Alapate will replace Roderick Thomas at outside linebacker. It'll be third down and two for the Packers. 24-24, fourth quarter. Some more in motion, and the pass is oh, caught. First down by Edgar Bennett. What a great play by Ty Detmer. Did you see that? They brought Alapati off the corner. He came clean. Detmer running backwards. Watch how he gets rid of this ball. It's sidearm on the run backwards. Look at this. The only way it could be thrown. And then an outstanding job of Bennett knowing that ball has to come quick. Bennett, seven carries, seven receptions, 65 yards. 131 yards total and right down the middle between rushing and receiving. First down on the 48. In Viking territory, Brooks in motion. Here's Edgar Bennett coming up field. And Bennett gets some hard yards. Essera Tua Olo on the stop. You know, we've talked so much about the skill people of the Green Bay Packers, but the offensive line is really starting to come together. And I think the one guy who's really made the biggest difference is Earl Dotson, number 72. And Earl Dotson last year was, you know, was a guy they thought, well, in a few years he's going to be pretty good. And then they had some injuries and they stuck him in, and he has really come through. He's been playing very, very well for them. Roderick Thomas came back in. Second down, seven. Detmer with a toss, trying to go to Brooks with Corey Fuller defending. The word on Reggie White is he has a sprained right knee, and they're reluctant to bring him back in the game. 5.02 showing on the clock, and there's White, who collided with Sean Jones on the last series by the Vikings. He ain't coming back in with all that ice on. Meanwhile, for Edgar Bennett, he has the most rushing yards by a Packer since Brent Fullwood in 89. Third and seven, blitz coming on Detmer, and it's intercepted by Roy Parker. Brady with the pressure, and Detmer threw it into the hands of Roy Parker, and the Vikings get it back. That's that fire blitz again. Brady comes flying up inside. Watch him come inside. A nice job, a very nice job of Barker. Great awareness of knowing what's happening. Watch Barker come from the outside. He sees Bennett, force him inside. Now he sees he thinks it's going to come quick. Actually, it's a poor throw by Detmer because of the great pressure by Brady. But nice awareness by Barker to make that pick. Brady's had himself a heck of a football game today. He has been a very pleasant surprise for the Vikings. Four turnovers. And that's the first NFL pick by Barker. First down on the 43-yard line. And Stewart. Coots finally gets him on the second shot. Now, the Minnesota Vikings can run straight ahead. 
That's when David Dixon's 71 is most effective. You see Brett Favre over there talking to Ty Detmer. David Dixon is a real young player. He's really raw. He's a monster of a man. 340 pounds, hardly any fat on the guy at all. But he has a tendency to get real top-heavy. And so when you can get all that mass going forward straight ahead, then he does pretty well. Matt Labonte has been the replacement for Reggie White at defensive end, number 97. Second down, 10. Labonte puts pressure on Moon. His pass to the 30-yard line. That's Padre Ismail. And a big catch for Ismail, who fumbled after making a catch against the Bears Monday. 28 yards. The bounty's going to get the pressure here. Ismail's going to find this open spot right in the middle. And they're playing there too deep, so you want to try to get to the middle. The safety should be... The safety got his shoulders turned and was not able to come back inside. He thought... It appears that he thought Ismail was going to go up on him. And when he turned his shoulders, Ismail broke back inside. And Warren Moon has become the sixth quarterback in history to exceed 40,000 passing yards. Here is Stewart flagged down. And he carries the defenders another six yards in the process. So Warren Moon came in needing 181 yards. Sixth quarterback Holy in history. Puts him offense, amongst the number elite. 64, 10 yard penalty. Repeat it down. Meanwhile, Randall McDaniel holding on the penalty will bring it back. Randall McDaniel, number 64, is the kind of a player that if he gets his hands on you, he wins. I mean, he's a tough hit. Now, that time, he just, he didn't get his hands on you. He hugged him. He just, you know, if I was officiating scholastic wrestling, that'd be two right there for the takedown. That was a costly penalty because it brings the ball back to the 39. Vikings want to at least get in field goal range to take a lead with 324 remaining. They have a first and 20. Moon's pass, incomplete. Reed, and he was defended by Doug Evans. Well, and they got the pressure on Warren Moon to force the bad throw. And so Fritz Shermer on the other side thinks they got to have a little bit of help. You got Reggie White out of there. And now we have to get a little bit of pressure, so you're going to have to blitz a little bit. When you do that, though, you take chances. You let your corners out there by themselves, and if you can't get a safety in the middle, you're on an island. Timeouts remaining, two apiece. Second and 20. Score is tied at 24. Moon to throw again. Short drop, incomplete to Reed. You know, man, it's amazing that the Packers have turned the ball over four times. Their quarterbacks have been sacked four times, and yet it's an even ball game at this point on the scoreboard. Normally, that would indicate a big margin for the team doing all that other work. Well, and then, you, you know, you see in the first half, they kind of took the game over. And then after Favre hurt his ankle, they got a little unraveled, tried to force a couple balls. Then Detmer came in, moved him right down, and got the score. Now they put it back in the lap of Minnesota. Big third down right here. Third and 20. On the 39-yard line. Here comes a blitz. Oh, my. And they all come, and the pass seems complete. What a roll of the dice for Fritz Shermer. Mike Pryor amongst those pressuring. There were several defensive backs storming in on Warren Moon. What a great call. Watch what they do. Fritz Schirmer, he's going to take them, he's going to walk them up, and at the last second, he's going to come clean. Now, this guy has to make a decision. He chooses outside. Pryor comes inside and forces the bad throw from Warren Moon. Boy, that's a great call. It is a punting situation, so that penalty and then the good defensive calls by Fritz Schirmer paid off, and a kick... Saxon wants to keep it in the field. No way. A touchback. And the Packers will take it into the 20-yard line. Now, T.J. Rubley, the third quarterback, is going to be called in because Ty Detmer injured his thumb. So two Packer quarterbacks have been hurt today. And Rubley, who came in with a bit of a flash with the Los Angeles Rams a couple of years ago, is going to have to lead the Packers here. I mean, let me tell you something. I had T.J. Rubley's big game. And it was against the Detroit Lions. 
and he was with the Los Angeles Rams and he got hot and I think it was one of those zones that he got into and that's exactly what Holmgren needs to get him in right now is his own you know and by bringing in the third quarterback your other two can't come in they're over so you have three minutes and four seconds left Rubley's the guy ready or not here he comes first and ten from the 20 yard line for the Packers tied up in a fumble Vikings recover. Well, I said ready or not. I guess he wasn't ready. T.J. Rubley and the center. Before you can hand it off or throw it, you got to take it. And a big turnover. Esser Atua Olo recovers for the Vikings deep in Packer territory. See if he pulls out too soon. No, he didn't. He stayed there. He just never got his hands on it. It didn't look like he was used to the rear end of Frank Winters. Now you wonder why why Detmer wasn't in there. Well, it was because of this play right here. Brady comes and hits him. Oh, he puts his hand down right there. That's where he hurt his thumb. So the ankle for Favre, the thumb for Detmer, rudely comes in and bobbles the snap. Five turnovers by the Packers. And it's a first down on the 20-yard line for the Vikings. The give is to Stewart. Bubble, unbelievers have it. And George Teague and Green Bay gets it back. What a bizarre game. <laughs> you gotta be kidding me. Leroy Butler came up, was gonna make sure the tackle, the ball came flopping out, and then Teague picked it up. What an improbable scenario today. Watch it right here. Watch how he gets the hand in there, aware of where the ball is, and he pulls it. It's a great play by Leroy Butler. That's awareness, and then Teague picks it up, only to have Evans throw him down. And Matt, that was no accident. They were going after the ball. Well, watch Butler. See, this is awareness of the ball. Something you practice every day. When you have your opportunity, you take advantage of it. So amazingly, the Packers survived when it looked like it was lights out for them. And T.J. Rubley will get back there. That's the first turnover by the Vikings today. Ball at the 21. Rubley will run. And he is tackled by Broderick Thomas, short of the first down by about three and a half yards. Well, he's going to get back to the huddle, and somebody in that offense is going to say, look, you get down. We have nobody else. You get down. If you get in the clear and somebody's going to whack you, don't be a hero. you got to get down. And if you're in the defense, you're over there yelling, keep running, Rook. <laughs> hey, TJ, you got good legs. Good legs. Keep running. What a improbable turn of events in this game. Second down and four from the 27. Detmer going far from Rook's in motion. Rubley's pass intercepted. Vikings have it. Shimura and a Viking defender. And... We do not have an official call yet. We did not get a signal yet from the official. Shamora wrestling with Ed McDaniel. Well, the tie goes to the runner, right? Always. <laughs> so that goes to the offense. Packers keep the ball, but that was, again, too close for comfort well, for Mike Holmgren. They should thank Shamora for lifting weight what he did was just wrestle it out of his arms. Watch the ball comes in nice and tight. Now look at this. That is, that's a nice, that's a pick right there. And then Chamora just wrestles it back out of his hands and he wins the wrestling match. And so he gets really on the play, a simultaneous catch. In the event of a simultaneous catch, the ball belonged to the offense. First. Yeah, tie goes to the runner. So goes to the offense. Chamora won the wrestling match. That's why he got the catch. Rubley has been inactive as the third quarterback every game this season. He saw action in the first two preseason games. We have our two-minute warning in a, well, amazing game. 24-24. We'll be back. Should a man be judged by what he wears? Are you really any less of a man because you don't wear the right shirt or pants? Should you have to wear a shirt or pants at all? Ask yourself, hasn't our society advanced to the point where a man can feel comfortable in a dress? Uh, 
probably not. Always appropriate 100% cotton pants that are soft and wrinkle-free. Hager, stuff you can wear. How much closer are our precision heads? Our innovative lift-in cuff system? How much better is the latest Norelco? In a word, we've never brought you closer. The Norelco Razor, our closest shave ever. To you, it looks like this. To a car thief, it looks like this. And to Ford Motor Company engineers, it looks like the most powerful anti-theft device ever. Only this key sends an electronic code to the engine before it will ever start. So it looks like your new Taurus will be just where you park it. Ford, quality is job one. If you've only heard the legend, then you've only heard half the story. This Tuesday, Fox presents the world broadcast premiere of a Francis Ford Coppola film, Bram Stoker's Dracula, starring Keanu Reeves, Winona Ryder, Anthony Perkins, and Gary Oldman on the Fox Tuesday night movie. Two minutes remaining in the fourth quarter, tied at 24. First down, Packers from the 32. And the pass, good catch made by Brooks. He has made several acrobatic catches today short of the first down however that's a heck of a throw by Rublin. that thing's down where it has to be and he put some put some mustard on it too timeouts remaining two apiece packers were trailing 24 16 in the fourth quarter at denver to a touchdown pass to shimura and then to shimura for the conversion and there have been a couple of turnovers since then pass overthrown for ingram 128 on the clock. It'll be second down. Second and about one. Every third and one. Yeah. Third and one. Yeah, right. It's Ty Detmer who came in and threw his first NFL touchdown pass and then had to come out with the injured thumb. And now it's in the hands of TJ Rubley. Who was with the Rams back in 92. See if we have a false start. And they're pointing at Dotson, but Roy Barker moved first. And if he was in the neutral zone, it'll get, go against the defense. False start. Offense number 72. Five-yard penalty. Still third down. Dotson in a very costly penalty because instead of third and one, it's now third and six. I watch Barker jumps because he never gets into the neutral zone. Had he gone in there and then you react to it, it would have gone against the defense. Dorsey Levins comes back in. Barb and Detmer watching. That's all he can do at this point. Here comes pressure on Rubley, and the pass is caught for the first down by Brooks. And he gets close to midfield and in Viking territory. A big play again by Brooks. 17-yard catch. Donald uh, Frank defense. Yeah, Rubley hangs in there, knows he's going to get the blitz. They do a great job of picking it up up top. You know, watch right there. Here comes the blitz of Brady. They pick it up, and then he sticks right with it. Now, Donald Frank on the other end tried to go for a home run. He took the bite, and he went hard on it, thinking he was going to get it, and he fell. And then a great job of tippy toes on the sideline by Robert Brooks. Little dance step there. Yeah. First down on the 47. Brady is picked up on the blitz from the middle. This time it's Ingram out of bounds to stop the clock. By the way, as far as Brooks is concerned, he has caught nine passes for 120 yards. Second straight week over 100 yards and the fifth time in his career. I got to say something right here. I think the way Rubley is playing is a credit to the coaching staff of the Green Bay Packers. Now, he's your third guy. He takes all your practice plays. He doesn't run any of your first or second group offense. All that has to be communicated and it's never done. It's just talked about. Second down, two. Here's Edgar Bennett. And Bennett close to a first down. Broderick Thomas on the tackle. And there's Chris Jackie, who has responded in a big way today with three field goals, including one from 50 yards. And he would be called upon to possibly win it for the Packers. His career long is 54. Clock stops with 109 for a measurement. It's 
game has had everything in it, Matt. Sudden switches of momentum. There you see they're short by less than a yard. Reggie White came out with a sprained right knee. He couldn't come back in. Many of the other injured players have returned to the game, however, but not Brett Favre or Ty Detmer. Third and one. Detmer being chased from behind. Throws it up for grabs. Intercepted by Brady. It was off the hands of Brooks, deflected and intercepted by Jeff Brady as Broderick Thomas put the backside pressure on T.J. Rudley, and we're not out of turnovers yet. The Vikings get one last shot at it. <laughs> yeah, forget about time. We're not out of turnovers yet. That's a good call. <laughs> the thing, he's just trying to try to buy. Now he just tries, he just, that's desperation. Should have thrown the thing away, punted it. Instead, it gets flopped around, and then Brady comes up with it. Well, they've got to be happy with the way Brady's played today. 50 seconds remaining. Yeah, I think he filled the bill pretty well. Six turnovers by the Packers today. And Warren Moon will try to get Minnesota in the field goal range from the 28 of the Vikings. Out of the shotgun. Moon's pass is caught by Jake Reed at midfield. Stops the clock with 45 seconds remaining. And now... Another opportunity, perhaps, not for Chris Jackie, but for Juan Reves. Reves missed one from 47 yards in his last go at it here in the fourth quarter. Each team has two timeouts remaining. Moon has been in the shotgun the last two plays. Moon has time, incomplete, intended for Am Lee with Leroy Butler defending. This game has had absolutely everything, including 42 seconds left. So what they've got to do is they've got to go down about 23 yards or so, 24 yards, to give Revez that magic number of being inside the 45. Still time for more turnovers, Matt. Yeah, yeah, good point. <laughs> Revez. Working out, getting ready on the sideline. Second down, 10. Move. Pass is caught. And getting away from the defender. And a big game is Lenny McGill, but it was Reed. And that's that magic number to get inside for the field goal. With 31 seconds left, Jake Reed flops right out of his shoe and this is just great effort he works with McGill McGill has good coverage all the way now watch him come back now make the tackle wrap the arms he does it and then he leaves him his shoe and picks up a whole bunch more yards first down inside the 30 yard line and quad reveys already is in a much better field goal range than what he had before. Timeout by the Vikings. They have one remaining. Reed on this drive has caught two passes for 46 yards. 31 seconds remain. And Reves has made a career out of clutch kicks in the waiting moments of games and even in the extra session. Ball at the 27 of the Packers. Scotty Graham is in at running back. Evans the blocker. Moon's throw. Overthrow to Carter. And the pending was Newsom. Moon's numbers today, three touchdown passes.
Welcome back to Minneapolis. The waiting moments of this game and the Vikings trying to get a field goal to win. It's been a seesaw affair. Trying to break a 24-24 tie is Warren Boone of the Vikings. Second down and 10 on the Packer 27. Dick Stockton and Matt Millen and moving in the line. And let's see now if it is a false start. And Matt Labounty, who has replaced Reggie White, who left the game with an injury. This has been a grueling game. Offsides, defense number 96. Unabated to the quarterback. Five yards. Repeat the down, second down. And you see Sean Jones, he just jumped. And another guy jumped inside, and Sean just kept on coming. Looked like Darius Holland also jumped. Of course, White out with an injury, and both quarterbacks. There you see his sprained knee, both Brett Favre and Ty Detmer, his backup, unable to play anymore because of injuries. And T.J. Rubley, the, the emergency quarterback, came in and threw an interception, a flurry of turnovers in the waning moments of this game. Packers have turned it over six times today. Second down and five. And the handoff to Scotty Graham with 25 seconds to go, and the Packers... Little they can do, and the Vikings are getting ready to set up a, what they hope will be a game-winning field goal. Well, remember, right at the start of this game, we spoke with, talked about what Mike Holmgren said. He said, look, if we just don't hurt ourselves, we'll win this football game. And now they have six turnovers. It's still 24-all, and you'd have to think that with this kick, Claude Revez beats them. What ended up happening was the Packers again beat themselves two weeks in a row. Timeout, three seconds remaining. So the Packers were hoping to get up to the next level with wins either at Detroit or at Minnesota or both. May not happen. And the Vikings, like the Lions last week, really in a desperation straight with a losing record, coming up with the big effort today. And Quad Reves will try to win it for the Vikings. And in the course of two weeks, the Packers went from facing a desperate team to becoming one themselves. And that's a good point, because they could fall two games behind the Bears, who they play next week at Lambeau Field. And you can see the look on Brett Favre's face that it has been a kind of a sour day for the Pack. And don't forget this. You got Brett Favre's ankle. If he does play, he won't be 100%. You get Reggie White's knee. If he does play, won't be 100%. And you got a backup with a bad thumb. Three seconds to go. A 39-yard attempt for Reves to pull it out for the Vikings. Time out to Green Bay. And uh, Isom, the Packers, use their second timeout. They have one, and now Reves. Holding his Saxon. High snap, and the kick. It's good, and the Vikings win it. The Minnesota Vikings have outlasted the Green Bay Packers 27-24. Juan Reves with a 39-yard field goal as time expired gives Minnesota a win they need.